bowl game the last three years, and they sure as heck have not achieved the type of success that Spurrier was able to at the University of Florida. That's all starting to change a little bit here, but both these teams, George, got to pick up a victory today if they're going to have a chance at a bowl game. Yeah, and, and you know what? I knew We knew coming in that Steve Spurrier is going to be going to take him a couple of years, but you know what? Steve Spurrier is an intelligent uh, offensive quarter, I mean, minded person, so we look for him to win early, and I, I mean, I do anyway, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to start today, hopefully. Bryant Hanfeld will kick things off for the Vanderbilt Commodores. Very talented freshman who also is the field goal kicker and the punter on this team. Back deep for Carolina. It's Noah Whiteside and that man, Jonathan Joseph, who hauls it in five yards deep into the end zone, and he will take the fair catch. The Gamecocks will start off at their own 20-yard line. Gamecocks led by that man, number 12, Blake Mitchell, a 6'3 redshirt sophomore out of LaGrange, Georgia. And those numbers right there, good enough for first place in completion percentage, second in efficiency, second in yardage in the Southeastern Conference. I don't think anybody expected that out of Blake Mitchell this year, his first year as a starter in a Gamecock uniform. And I might add that he's grown up a lot. Carolina starts off passing formation, tries to hit Newton on a bubble screen, but the pass is deflected by Vanderbilt. Starting lineups, starting offense for the South Carolina Gamecocks, Levy, St. Pro, White, Coleman, and Goddard. That offensive line has been different all seven games for Carolina. The backfield, Davis, Terman, Carson Askins is the tight end. Sidney Rice, who comes in red hot, and of course, Savell Newton, the man they're trying to get the football to more. And now Savell Newton lining up under center, gets the snap, and off to Dacus Terman between the tackles, and he gets a gain of about five, maybe six. It'll be third down and four. So Savell Newton already getting some action at another position. Defensive line for the Commodores, Harrison, McKenzie, Brown and Booker. Booker's a three-year starter out of Brandon, Mississippi. And then the linebacking core, Kevin Joyce, Jonathan Goff, and the tackling machine, Moses Asifaji, who has had 10 or more tackles the last three ball games. Four wide formation, Mitchell steps up in the pocket, fires, and it is almost intercepted. In and out of the hands of the Vanderbilt secondary. That was awfully close. Ohanaja had his hands on it. He is one of the... Right here, when you look at the replay, it looked like he almost threw his receiver. But somebody's right there in the middle. I can't tell who it was, but we were lucky we didn't, uh, we didn't turn that ball over that time. Ohanaja, another one of those three-year starters. He had a game-high 18 tackles versus the Gamecocks last year. And right there, he missed a good opportunity for an INT. Almost a block on the Josh Brown punt which will drop dead at about the 30-yard line, and as usually is the case with a brown punt, no return, so 43 yards on the punt and 43 yards on the net, and now it'll be Vanderbilt's turn to see what they can do on offense. Well, Cutler, Cutler, <laughs> I know he's licking his chops because this kid is a good quarterback and uh, he hadn't beaten South Carolina since he's been there. So this right here could be very, uh, very um, costly if, if South Carolina don't start off very quickly. Jay Cutler, eight touchdowns to six interceptions on the year. He is second all time in Vanderbilt offense. He is the active SEC leader in offensive yardage. and. You know, that, those numbers there show what he can do through the air, but he's also run for over 1,200 career yards. So he is, yeah. he's a multi-purpose guy. He's a heady guy, and he's well coached by that man, Bobby Johnson, who has seen his Commodores pull off some upsets already this season. They opened up a lot of eyes by beating Ole Miss early on, then at Arkansas, a win on the road. They won their first four games, but 
George, they've lost their last four, so they're trying to figure out mm -hmm. wh kind of what's their identity. Are they really <laughs> that good, or are, are right. they now just hitting a streak where they can't recover? Well, I think they relaxed a little bit when they played Middle Tennessee State, and then, uh, they lost that game. And then Georgia, of course, you know, is playing well itself. But don't count, don't count, for, uh, don't count them out because they are a good football team and they're coached real well. The Commodores will come out onto the field momentarily. Jake Cutler, 6'4", 228-pound senior out of Santa Claus, Indiana. That is uh, actually the hometown, Santa Claus, <laughs> Indiana. They project Cutler as a, a mid-round pick, the NFL scouts do. They like his athleticism. They like his decision-making. And he will lead the Commodores to the line of scrimmage here. Meanwhile, the Gamecock defense coming off one of their better performances of the year, causing five turnovers against Kentucky a couple of weeks ago. We'll see if Carolina has answers for Jake Cutler and company here. Pro set to start things off. Cutler hands off to the deep back, a short yardage play. That is number 21, Jeff Jennings, a sophomore out of Pegram, Tennessee. And, and if you notice, every time something we play somebody, they always start out on the run. King, Williams, Holloway, Eames, and Stamper, the offensive line. Stamper is kind of the veteran, the uh, stalwart to that unit. The backfield, Jennings, Stephen Bright, a South Carolina young man. Dustin Dunning is the tight end. They'll go to him quite a few times in this ball game. Marlon White and Eric Davis, they're leading wide receiver. Another running play, and there is Stephen Bright. The 6'4", 236-pound junior out of Riverside, South Carolina. That's only his fourth carry of the year, but he's caught 10 passes. Former quarterback, and he was a backup the last couple years for Vandy at the quarterback spot. Now, they just say, George, he's too athletic to keep him off the field. They want to throw him out there somewhere. Defensive line for Carolina, Lindsey Tucker, Stanley Doty, the big man over 335, along with Oris Lambert. Mike West, the fastest linebacker on the team for the Gamecocks. And, of course, everybody that falls the SEC knows about Coach Simpson in that secondary. Third down and four. Here's Cutler lunging forward at the 41. He's going to be close. He's going to be close. Oris Lambert was in on the tackle. And they say he's got it. This is a real athletic quarterback. I'm sorry, Mike. Uh, He's an athletic quarterback, you know, and he's very, very strong. That's what people don't give him credit for, and he will run the ball. Yeah, you can see there he's tough to bring down, and the initial hit was around the 40, but he dragged a couple Garnet jerseys forward. That was the difference for the first down. Staggered eye look for Vandy. Bright and Jackson Garrison behind Jay Cutler. There is Jackson Garrison, number 22, probing the middle. <laughs> and picking up a couple. It'll be second and long. Mike, I like to think that South Carolina defense has toughened up a little bit. Usually uh, teams will be <laughs> running all over us about this time. <laughs> right now, South Carolina, although it's early, South Carolina's playing pretty good defense to me. Four rushes in this drive. No passes for Vandy. Last year, Vandy really had trouble running the football against the Gamecocks. They're trying to fix that here. Second down and eight. Carolina stacking up the line, and there is a hard hit, and that is Lindsey. One of the Lindsey twins, number 40, Dustin Lindsey, the 6'3", 215-pound sophomore out of Mobile, Alabama. His twin brother is a starter on the defensive line. That's Jordan Lindsey. Uh, you know what? This by him makes me feel that Hurley, <laughs> I don't know if he's going to get back in the game or not. This Lindsey kid is playing real good linebacker, and this is what you got to do. You got to butt him in the head, and this, this is exactly what Lindsey does. And you see the reaction, that defense trying to get fired up. Jackson Garrison alone back for Cutler. Third down and nine. Cutler, three-step drop, fires a corner round, and it's dropped by Marlon White. And Vanderbilt will be forced to punt the football. They did this against Georgia a lot by driving passes. And, and we, as we said in the beginning of the program, if Vanderbilt's going to win the football game, the receivers have got to start catching the football. Yeah, Vanderbilt dropping eight last week and a loss 
to the Georgia Bulldogs. Kenny McKinley back to return the punt, picks it up at the 16. Little jitterbug move at the 20 and then starts going the wrong direction. And they'll mark it at the 19 and Carolina will take over first down and 10. Scoreless game here early on in the first quarter. Gamecocks and Commodores. And we'll be back in just a moment. Now, so far on this gridiron, it's been a defensive showdown. Neither team able to get much going on offense. Most of these Vanderbilt South Carolina games over the years have been low scoring affairs. You don't see a whole lot of games in the 30s or even the high 20s. Last year, Carolina holding Vanderbilt to just six points. Jake Cutler, along with Stephen Bright and Jeff Jennings on the backfield. Cutler is going to look to pass, looking near sideline. Steps up in the pocket, fires a long pass deep down the field and almost intercepted by Co Simpson. The guy was covered, uh, and, I, and when you go for a big play like this, you got to have a receiver, not a tight end running it down like that. He looked like a tight end. But, uh, you know, Carolina make big plays like this. If we can if we can get um, Coach Simpson to intercept this ball, you never know. This could be a turning point. But um, the guy overthrew all of them. Color. Coach Simpson got his first pick of the year against Kentucky in the last ball game. He's hungry for two. He had six a year ago. Second down for the Commodores and nowhere to run, nowhere to hide as Chris Tucker blows that play up. Jeff Jennings takes the loss. It'll be third down and long. Mike, when have we seen this? <laughs> it's been a while. It's not a whole lot of uh, TFLs, tackles for loss. <laughs> we got our first defensive tackle making a tackle in the backfield. <laughs> he, he made some improvement as of this week off. <laughs> Look good. I like that. Chris Tucker now his second tackle for loss in this ball game. 6'1", 288 pound, redshirt senior out of Decatur, Georgia. Third and 14, and Vanderbilt elects to call timeout. 6.31 to go in the first quarter of play. We're still scoreless here on CSS, your source for Southeast sports. Scoreless ball game here from williams Bryce Stadium in Columbia, South Carolina, alongside George Rogers. Mike Morgan with you here on CSS. A critical third down and 14 for Vanderbilt. Only one completed pass in this ball game thus far. Cutler operates from the gun. Got to throw short. Has a man at the 11. And not much there as Earl Bennett is swarmed up into a number of guarded jerseys there. Stanley Doty, Oris Lambert, Coach Simpson all in the vicinity. This defense is playing enthusiastic. I mean, it's something that we've been longing to see, but it, I like it. It looks good. Our defense is starting to, to play football out there. And I like to see that. Vanderbilt got to get the punt off almost a block there. McKinley back to field it. In Gamecock territory crosses midfield, fighting, and finally brought down at about the 46-yard line. So that will be good field position for the Gamecocks. Neither team has enjoyed good field position yet, but a 40-yard punt from deep in Vanderbilt territory allows the Gamecocks to start this drive off on the Vanderbilt side of the field. I feel like South Carolina defense is being real feisty out there. And I like that. I mean, it's something that they hadn't really shown. Well, they got something to build on now. A little bit more confident after their showing against Kentucky. Dacus Terman alone back in a four-wide set as Mitchell is looking a gun. Pump fake, now fires. Complete! It's Chris Clark at the 23-yard line. The first completion. Second completion for Blake Mitchell on the day and the longest pass play for either team. Mike, we get real lucky on this one. This pass is tipped. Uh, this, this defensive back, uh, well, you know, it, sometimes it's going to happen like that, but we were fortunate to get the ball back. 24 yards on the hookup. Mitchell to Chris Clark, the senior out of Lexington, South Carolina. Mitchell this time operating under center, looking far sideline. Now he's going to run outside, flushed out of the pocket, and brought down right at the 20. It's Ray Brown, number 94, a 6'3", 295-pound junior for the Commodores. Blake Mitchell, can, if he 
uh, keep his head downfield uh, long enough. Uh, Savelle's going to be open in the middle, so he can he can really throw him that little check down right there. Savelle's got the ability where he can move, make some moves in the open field, and uh, maybe get some more yards. But it's better not to better to just go out of bounds than to throw, just throw an interception or something. Like that. Second down and seven. Sidney Rice at the bottom of your screen. Mitchell handing off to Newton. Newton's got a lane. Spin move at the seven and down to the five-yard line. Savelle Newton exploding on that carry. He, he brings a lot of quickness, Mike, uh, to, the, to the South Carolina backfield. You know, it's always good to, like, Duncan Sturman can hit it up in the middle real good. But nothing can beat quick feet and, and good moves. He make a spin move right here and get some extra yards. Savelle is a true football player. Pretty good block there by the left guard, Freddie St. Pro as well. The offensive line, they've been criticized much of the year for not opening up holes, but a pretty good one there. No doubt. First and goal from the five, from the eye, Blake Mitchell tosses it left side. And down to about the four with a penalty flag being thrown is Savelle Newton. That flag flew out all the way from the end zone. <laughs> And it is on Carolina. You can actually hear the coaching staff, including Coach Spurrier, asking, who was it? They should give the number. They do that now in college football most of the time. Holding on the offense for 86. 10 yards penalty, of the run. Repeat first down. And there you go. That's why the flag came from the end zone. It's on wide receiver Chris Clark. Chris Clark, the guilty party. Well, you know, Chris, Chris Clark, you know, he's probably uh, blocking on a guy that's probably half, uh, I mean, just bigger than him. And uh, a lot of times you get in that kind of situation, you try to do anything, you try to block the guy. So that backs it up all the way to the 14-yard line. Still first down and goal. Mitchell has all kinds of time. Nobody's open, nobody's open, and now he's going to be brought down. That will not be a sack. It's in front of the line of scrimmage. It'll be a modest gain, but just a case there, George, where nobody was able to break free. Uh, either that or uh, Mitchell was scared to pull the trigger. I mean, I, I look like some of the guys are, 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 are down there, but he just didn't want to throw the football. I, I don't see why, but hey, give him the time. He's going to be a good quarterback for South Carolina. So now second and goal from the 11-yard line. Sidney Rice to Mitchell's right. You've got Clark and McKinley on the left. And now a penalty flag as Terman was late coming onto the field. Well, those are the kind of penalties that'll drive the coach crazy. Illegal substitution on the offense. It's a five yard penalty, remains second down. So Carolina continues to shoot themselves in the foot here. Gamecocks going from first and goal from the five. Now it is second and goal from the 16-yard line. That's not going to please that man too much. Not at all. And you would think that having a week off, Carolina would be a little bit more disciplined in, in what, they, what they're doing out there. Under three minutes remaining in the first quarter. Term in the lone back. Mitchell on a pass play. Steps up in the pocket, throws to the end zone. Rice! Touchdown, South Carolina. Sidney Rice does it again. And move over Jermel Kelly. There is a new record holder. Six games now in a row. Sidney Rice has caught a touchdown pass. What a fantastic year for the freshman out of Gaffney. He's about 6'4". And when you got a guy about 6'4", hanging up there. Let him get a chance to make the play. And, of course, this kid here is a good football player. And, uh, we're fortunate to have him on South Carolina. Extra point by Brown is up and in. And the Gamecocks jump out to the 7-0 lead. A 16-yard pass play. Blake Mitchell to number four, Sidney Rice. And there you see a school record six consecutive games. That record was tied by Rice against Kentucky, tied Jermel Kelly. Kelly did it back in 1997. 
And just a simple jump ball. I mean, he, he was an outstanding basketball player in high school, wanted to play here at Carolina. And a lot of times what he does, George, is almost boxing out kind of like a basketball player would for a rebound. No doubt about it. And then, and then it gets to the point where who wants it the baddest? And certainly this kid here is an athlete. And like I said in the beginning, we are fortunate to have such a good receiver and, and, and as a freshman. Six plays on the drive, covering 47 yards. The drive took three minutes and 20 seconds. So Carolina now on top, 7 to nothing. And Vanderbilt will see if they can answer the score. Bennett and Jackson Garrison back to receive the kickoff from one Ryan Suckup, a talented freshman with a cannon of a leg. Out of Hickory, North Carolina, he leads the Southeastern Conference with 14 touchbacks. And, and Mike, you could contribute some of that to Savell Newton, the running he did on that on, on South Carolina drive. As yeah, Savell Newton, four carries here in the early going, 26 yards on the ground. Turnable. It's Bennett. Bennett straight up the middle, past the 20. And that's where it'll all come to an end, right around the 21-yard line. Pretty good coverage by South Carolina. Not bad. You see the cock and fire when they are able to score first three and zero this year. So trying to add to that statistic. Seven nothing lead right now for a Vanderbilt offense that has been improved this year. They're a little bit more lethal than we've seen in years past, and they're going to have to be. Carolina blitzing on the play. Cutler going to throw quick and a beautiful one-handed grab by Stephen Bright. And you know Stephen Bright is fired up to come back to South Carolina for this ball game. And a nice play there for the quarterback turned fullback. <laughs> Good hands. <laughs> this kid made an unbelievable catch. Catch the ball in stride and keep right on going down the field. That was pretty. Ten yards on the pass play. And it'll be a first down for Vanderbilt. Twelve grabs on the year now for Bright. Cutler rolling out right. Three receivers out there. And nice coverage there. A nice job by Fred Bennett to knock the ball away. Bennett has had an up and down season this year. He's been benched a couple of games. He's been called out a few times by his coaches but makes a nice stop here George he really does and Cutler is trying to throw it on the money but a guy reached around him and made a good play batting the ball down good play Vanderbilt going for Marlon White who is their second leading receiver White dropped a touchdown pass in that Georgia game really hurt Vandy there's a quick wide receiver Screen play to Earl Bennett, but Jonathan Joseph snuffing that one out. South Carolina is playing pretty good defense right now. And if we're going to win this football game, as we said in the beginning, they have got to play good defense. And, hey, look at this. This is a one-on-one -on -one play, and the guy makes a tackle, and they got a lot of guys running around the football. I like that. So a third and six for the Commodores. One out of three on third down thus far. Cutler fakes the draw, now fires the inside screen. Caught, shedding a tackler is number 10, Earl Bennett. And that shedded tackler will be enough to allow Bennett to get to the first down marker and more. <laughs> I, this, is what, this is what I'm talking about. When South Carolina plays good defense, this kid right here, the quarterback, Cutler, he's a good quarterback. He's going to do things that normally quarterbacks wouldn't do. Of course, that was an easy play right there. But what I'm saying is he's got a quick release. He runs the football. He does so many good things, Mike. Earl Bennett now with 
30 receptions on the year, 331 yards. First down and 10. Cutler again looking long this time. He's looking for Bennett. Bennett in double coverage. Ball tipped up on the ground and a flag thrown late by the field judge. And they might have interference here. I like he hit him a, a little bit before the pass got there. Pass interference on the defense number five. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. So our referee, Matt Austin, says pass interference as we take another look. Looked like he's... See, he yeah. ain't even looking back, so yep. it's definitely interference. That, that's Carlos Thomas, who plays a lot of receiver and has also played some defensive back. And George, you said the key. Uh, you know, a lot of times you can get away with some contact if you're looking at the ball. But exactly. If, but if you're just looking at the man... They're going to call it on you every time. Yep. So that does Carlos Thomas in there, and it's a first down for Vandy at the Gamecock 39-yard line. Cutler. Gives to his tailback. That's 21. Jeff Jennings, who surges forward for a gain of eight. This is the kind of things that I was talking about in our, in our run defense. We've got to get people down the field. If we don't stop them at the line of scrimmage, by the time they get to the uh, to the linebackers, the, the guys are so far down the field to the linebackers can't make a play. You know, the last game that uh, we did, George, you were Critical of the fact the linebackers weren't making enough tackles, too. And so that front seven's got to do a better job. No doubt about it. The first quarter comes to an end. The Gamecocks with a 7-0 lead and another low-scoring affair for these two teams that have been involved in several. Second quarter action coming your way. Stay tuned. More to come on CSS, your source for Southeast sports. A second and two for the Commodores. Jeff Jennings into the football again, and he looks to have another Vanderbilt first down as the Commodores will get ready for their seventh play on this drive, trying to match the Gamecock score on their last drive. <laughs> their running backs are starting to see a, a few holes that South Carolina has been having all year. Our defense has got to start buckling down, and this is where this is one place when they get started to get toward the red area that they need to start buckling down. Cutler looking into that Carolina Sun. An eye formation here. Cutler with the play action. Over the middle, fires a dart. Incomplete. Nice coverage by Jonathan Joseph, the intended target for the Vanderbilt Commodores. Was number eight, George Smith. They, they went at Joseph. They've been going after him a couple of times. Maybe they've seen something that they, they like because they've been going after him the last couple of times. Right here, I mean, it's, it's not a bad pass. I mean, this guy's covered. If he throws it anywhere else, it's probably going to be an interception. 88, George Smith has a touchdown reception on the year. He's their fourth option when it comes to wide receivers, but Vanderbilt trying to throw the ball all over the field to a number of different guys. This play will be stopped short as the penalty flag falls right near the snap of the play. Prior to the snap, false start, 72 of the offense, five-yard penalty, still second down. That's Brian Stamper. He's an interesting story, a, a junior out of Windermere, Florida. He has started every game in his career, as you take another look. He's the right tackle, you'll see him. Barely free <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a tiny one, George. Oh, man. That's a tiny one. When you're 280 pounds and that's the biggest movement you make, <laughs> you feel like you're okay. Right. Second down, 15 yards. Cutler going to take it himself. Little sprint draw action. And he'll get back to the original line of scrimmage. Well, that's a play Gamecock fans are familiar with for the last couple of years. Whether it was Dondrell Pinkins or Savelle Newton or Corey Jenkins, a lot of that type of play where the quarterback just gets it, puts his head down and run, runs as you take a look at the first quarter statistics. Pretty even overall. Look at that time of possession, almost identical. Both these offenses really still trying to find a rhythm. 
That's what Vanderbilt's going to try to do here on a third down and 11. Cutler looking near sideline. He is sacked. There is 45 to Adrian Coley, the senior out of Georgetown, South Carolina. South Carolina is doing something in this game that they hadn't done all year, and mainly is sack the quarterback and sometimes even catching the running back in the backfield. South Carolina looked like their defense came to play. Well, Coley came off the edge, and the only guy there to block him was the running back, Jackson Garrison. He just blew him up. Here is the punter slash kicker, Bryant Onfeld for the Commodores. Onfeld. Oh, that's got to be a flag of some kind there. Well, they didn't bring it out. You can block, you can do that. Meanwhile, they spot the punt at the four yard line. A Vanderbilt guy got a pretty good shot on one of the return men for Carolina. Ooh-wee. No laundry on the field as Jonathan Joseph gets a lick. Let's take another look at this one. <laughs> I think you can call this kapow. <laughs> exactly <laughs> what it was. And, and you know, this, this right here kind of play is what they call keep your head on a swivel. <laughs> he didn't have his head on a swivel, Mike. No, he did not. <laughs> no, he did not. Then Joseph just figured he wasn't going to be able to return it, so he'd get a lick in. Well, you can do that. And did he ever. <laughs> so first and ten from the four for the Carolina offense. Carolina drive, average drive starting at about the 19 and a half. Well, even less than that. One drive from the 20, another from the 19, and another from the four-yard line now. Vanderbilt. Their last drive starting at the 47-yard line. Field position probably going to be a big factor in this game, especially if it continues at this pace where scoring will be at a minimum. Well, let's go, excuse me, Mike. If, if uh, South Carolina is to take over this football game, one long, sustained drive will be good right about now. And 96 yards for pay dirt right here, and the Gamecocks... Coming into this game, 114th in the country in rushing the football, averaging less than three yards a carry. That's been improved so far today. But another stat that's kept them from really getting those long, sustained drives that you speak of, George, on third down, the Gamecocks just 32.8%. That's 10th in the SEC. And so that's one of the numbers that Steve Spurrier really wants to improve and improve in a hurry. And, and, and I think I think Blake will get a lot better as, as time goes on. But Coach Perry is going to work with him a whole lot. As you know, he was a quarterback himself, so he'll work with him a whole lot to get some of those things done. That guy in the back there, Savelle Newton, he's had a busy first half thus far. When I lighted up for you in the open, he's going to be a guy that he's going to get a lot of touches today. He's already run it four times. He's caught a pass. And he's played some quarterback. This time, Newton is deep in the backfield. Mitchell going to go play action. Mitchell from the end zone, picked off at the 12. The 10. It's Thompson. Thompson dives for the end zone and he is in there for the Vanderbilt touchdown. 14 yard interception return for Sharon Thompson. Well, looked like to me he was he threw it right in his arm. I mean, is no he threw it right to him. I mean, he didn't he didn't have anything on it. He threw it right to the guy. But you know what? He's going to make mistakes, and, and this is what football is all about. Blake will overcome this. I, I really do think that. So Blake Mitchell with a rare interception. He has not thrown many this year. Vanderbilt clearly in zone on the play. And it was almost as if Blake never saw him. Extra point for Vandy. It is up, and it is good off the foot of Bryant Honfeld, who comes in as one of the better kickers in the Southeastern Conference. 12.45 remaining in the first half of play. We're tied at seven here in Columbia, and you are watching CSS. Here's the man that tied this game up. Sharon Thompson, number eight for the Vanderbilt Commodores, as Blake Mitchell throws just his fifth interception of the year. Gamecocks will get the football back here. 
As Joseph and Whiteside back deep, it'll be Joseph from the four. Joseph trying to find a lane, sneaks through one at the 25 and finally brought down at the 27-yard line. So we'll get a chance here, George, to see how the Gamecocks recover from the turnover. Yeah, we need to recover real quick. Uh, Blake threw that interception. I think he knew he threw it. When he threw it, it was going to get intercepted. The guy made a pretty good move to get in the end zone. Blake was chasing him. Now, this he had Blake grown up by trying to get South Carolina to go down the field. This is one of the things Coach Spurrier was concerned about all week long. Vanderbilt mixing up their coverages, playing a lot of zone, and trying to do a good job of confusing quarterbacks. Blake looked a little confused on that one. Here's Newton. Trying to dance his way out of trouble, but there's nowhere to run and nowhere to hide. There is Moses Asefuji, spelled differently than the way it's pronounced, but I have clarification. It is Asefuji, a six foot, 228 pound senior out of Nashville, Tennessee, a three year starter. Try to say that three times, but I guarantee you one thing he's a good linebacker because he made a, a one on one tackle by himself. Second down and 11. Mitchell again handing it off to Newton between the tackles. Newton trying to get a tough couple yards. Kevin Joyce, the linebacker for Vanderbilt, in on the stop. You know, just to go back to uh, Sefaji for a moment, his numbers are amazing. He averages 10 tackles a game. He has seven and a half tackles for loss, two forced fumbles, three sacks, and two interceptions. He is the SEC's active tackle leader with 343, and our stat man Brian Bennett tells me already five tackles today. Mitchell under trouble, tripped up, tries to scoop it forward, but they're going to rule him. They're going to rule him down, they're going to actually give him an incomplete. Wow, they're going to give him an incomplete pass, so at least they get some of the yardage as opposed to taking the sack, but not a pretty drive for the Gamecocks. They'll have to punt it away. Not a pretty bright drive at all. I was thinking that Blake Mitchell would come back and try to give South Carolina a little motivation, but he did nothing of the sort. Well, George, we thought this could be a, a low-scoring game, and that's exactly what we have, a, a close nip-and-tuck 7-7 affair. Yeah, and I, I really don't, I think this kind of favors uh, uh, Vanderbilt a little bit to me because they got color on the other end. Earl Bennett, not a wise move, should have taken the fair catch. Instead, he gets popped and dropped right near where he caught the punt at about the 28-yard line. I, I, I don't know how he hold on to it. 11-16 remaining after the 42-yard punt. Our score, 7-7. Seven to seven. Vandy in South Carolina knotted up from Columbia and will return on CSN. For the Commodores, they've got the big fullback, Stephen Bright, at 6'4", 236. Cutler's a big guy himself if you're thinking about quarterback sneak here, George. No doubt. And, uh, and if I was Bobby, you know, that offensive line, I'd tell him to get down real low and uh, we're going to quarterback sneak it. This has been kind of a trouble spot for Carolina this year, stopping opponents on fourth down. They have allowed six conversions on 12 attempts. That's 50%, not a very good ratio. Student section trying to get loud, fire up this crowd. They really do. South Carolina's... Uh, it's Cutler on the keeper, and he's got it. Went right behind the right guard, Josh Eames. And that was more than enough. Well, I, who didn't know this? I mean, I, you, you got a quarterback that's real strong. And, and the offensive line is not bad either. You got a quarterback sneak all day long. That's where it helps to have a guy 6'4", 228. Under center, Cutler is also a strong guy. He is, that's one of the reasons why the NFL scouts like him so much. He really has a, an NFL body. You see him checking the old play card on the wrist. We've seen some South Carolina quarterbacks go from that from time to time this year. Bright and Jennings and a staggered eye. First and 10, Vanderbilt. Here's Cutler on a rollout, lofting it complete to 84. That's the tight end, Dustin Dunning, 
his 22nd reception of the year. And unlike a lot of teams in college football, George, Vanderbilt will use their tight end. A whole lot. And, and that what a beautiful bootleg this was. And I think this quarterback right here is real good. Time to get a little, little flat route right there. Throw it to the guy. Don't waste any time. Perfect play. Bobby Johnson came here to try to win this football game. Commodores, meanwhile, taking a pretty good amount of time off the clock on this drive, which is now at the Carolina 25-yard line. This will be the eighth play of this drive. Cutler in the pocket. Now he's going to run. Cutler spins at the 25 and is finally drugged down just inside the 25. Stanley Doty, one of the Gamecocks, in on that stop. The one thing about Jay Cutler, he's not gonna he's not gonna throw the ball uh, ne ne unnecessarily. He's gonna either try to run the football or he's gonna go he's gonna go down. And this is this is one thing that makes him a good quarterback. He's not gonna throw the ball in double coverage. He's gonna try to make something happen. And again, Cutler has run for over 1,200 yards in his Vanderbilt career. He is not afraid to put down the head, tuck the football, and go. Second down and ten. Three wide formation for Vandy. Cutler, little option play, tosses to Jackson Garrison. Garrison, nowhere to go. Beautiful read by the Gamecock defense. Coach Simpson and Charles Silas all over that play. You know what? I was Bobby Johnson. I would not run this play again because my quarterback is, is going to get hurt. If I, if I run this, look at this hit he takes. I mean, you can't keep on, you can't do your quarterback like that and expect him to, 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 to do a perfect game because it's not going to happen. The quarterback can't do it all. Third down and 11 now for Vanderbilt. South Carolina's sixth tackle for loss. Gamecock defense got to step it up here. Tenth play of this drive on third and long. From the gun, it's Cutler. Cutler fires complete, but short of the marker. That's Earl Bennett on another reception. But Jonathan Joseph was there to stop him short. And in all likelihood, Vanderbilt will bring out the kicking team. This is a, this is pretty good, though. Uh, Cutler, uh, he, he just set a record. Um, I, 597 completions. One of the many school records that Cutler is going to own when it's all said and done. 35-yard attempt by Bryant Hanfelt here. From the hash, the kick is up and it's blocked. Ball's on the ground. And Vanderbilt dives on it. It'll be Carolina football. Boy, Hanfelt came in red hot. 5 of 6 from 40 yards plus, 11 of 14 on the year, but that kick never had a chance. Not at all. Uh, I mean, South Carolina defense is playing with a lot of enthusiasm. Uh, I wish they wouldn't wait till they get down here toward the red zone before they start to play with some of it, but it always seemed to happen like that. But South Carolina did a good, they made a great play by making the block. I mean, this ball is well blocked, and they're lucky that South Carolina didn't get the bounce and, and take it all the way down to the other side. From that angle, it looked like it might have been Bennett. This will be a, a better look at it right here. I and mean, it is Bennett from the outside. Bennett, yeah. That is the first block kick for the Gamecocks this season. Here's Mitchell, all kinds of time over the middle, and that throw is off the mark. He had Chris Clark between the hashes, but unable to deliver there. Blake Mitchell, very accurate this season, over 65%. That leads the SEC. So that's kind of unusual for him to misfire, and, and really, that's been the story of the day. He's three out of nine, George. Yeah, and and but you but you know what? You can't give up on Blake Mitchell because he's done so many good things for our football team. So just give him a little bit of time. He's still young, and he's going to be a good quarterback. Savell Newton lined up behind Blake Mitchell. It's going to be another pass play. He's going to try to dump it off to Newton, but incomplete. I think Vanderbilt's starting to read that play. What play? <laughs> <laughs> well, the one where Newton <laughs> goes straight up, turns around, and no one's supposed to see him, but Vanderbilt read this one here. You take another look. Yeah, but even if he caught it, he wasn't going to have it. Right. But, hey, Savelle is going to be a, 
uh, a good wide receiver. I don't think running back is what we really want him to do. Third down and 10, and how about this? Total yards for the quarter. Vanderbilt 38, Carolina 2. Mitchell is hit on the throw. It'll be incomplete, but Vanderbilt getting the pressure. Vanderbilt getting the pressure by number 54. That is Theo Horrocks. 6'3", 280-pound sophomore out of Fayetteville, Tennessee. Our offense is, is, is not playing real well, well right now, and we're lucky that, he, that that ball got batted, but our offense is playing real bad right now. I don't think uh, Blake is any kind, of, is any kind, any kind of, of, of feel of the game right now. It's, just, it's not happening for him. So a stingy Vanderbilt defense as we are still tied at 7. Another punt for Brown. Bouncing inside the 25 and out of bounds at the 13. So another nice job by Josh Brown. Four minutes, five seconds remaining in the first half. And we're knotted at seven. 49 yards on the punt and no return. Right now, South Carolina defense has just got to keep playing. I mean, our offense have not gotten in gear yet, and I'm, I'm just waiting for them to start connecting on some of our pass plays. You know, we're, we're, we're knowing, we know we're going to throw the football. We just got to get some lanes to throw it in right now. Gamecock defense coming into this game. The bottom half of the SEC, they've stepped it up so far today. Vanderbilt with one impressive drive, and that's been it. Gamecock stacking the line right now. Eight guys on the line of scrimmage. Another option play to the right side of the penalty flag on the field. Maybe Bobby didn't hear me when I said I would. I wouldn't do. Not listening, George. Had no doubt. <laughs> we need to hook his head headphones into our frequency here. Well, Bobby knows more than I do, evidently. Prior to the snap, false start. Right guard on the offense. Five yard penalty, still first down. Josh Eames on the infraction there. It will be first and 15. <clears throat> and even if that play gets off, the speed of this Carolina defense, it's, it, it's very hard to run to the boundary on this defense. No, no, no doubt about it, especially where our linebackers will get pushed back anyway. <laughs> So you know, they're going to try to run into the sideline real quick. It might not be the, the biggest and strongest defense in the SEC, but they can run. Yes, they can. First down and 15. Offset eye for the Commodores. And here is Jennings. Coach Simpson drags him down at about the 10. And what a great tackle by Coach Simpson. Because the first guy missed. Well, Co leading this team with 50 tackles but that's not necessarily good news no <laughs> you don't want your safety doing that no you don't and and we and see this uh one of our linebackers missed right here and uh that was hurry missed but coach simpson was there to, 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 to make the tackle coach simpson the sec defensive player of the week against kentucky you see those numbers awfully impressive Here's second down and 13 and again Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide for Vanderbilt as Oris Lambert in on the stop. Ooh, wait. I'm talking about when he hit him, he, didn't look, he looked like he didn't even see him coming. <laughs> That's one of the hardest hits to, to get over with. Number 51, I mean, he really, oh, man, I'm telling you, he looked like he didn't even see him coming. The oh. Gamecocks have devoured Vanderbilt seven times, seven tackles for loss in this game. That is uh, without question the high for the season. It's already the, only the first half with 3.15 to go. Game tied at seven and a timeout on the field. Welcome back williams Bryce Stadium. 3.15 remaining in the first half. Vanderbilt facing a third down and 14. Gamecock defense looking for a big stop here. Jackson Garrison is the lone back for the Commodores on a three wide set from the gun, it's Cutler, he's gonna tuck it and run from the 15, breaking it outside, now cuts it back at the 23 and upfield to the 28, what a run by Jay Cutler and on a third and 14, 
deep in their own territory. Vanderbilt gets a first down on a quarterback run. Can you believe it? This quarterback, hey, he might be a better runner than he is a passer. He's certainly smart about tucking it and run, running just then, but this guy right here is hard to bring down. He is he's a pretty good man. I got to give him credit. He, he done pretty good. We are pleased to uh, welcome to the broadcast booth here. South Carolina's head basketball coach, Dave Odom. Coach, you, you love defense. That's what we have here today. We've got it. Depends on your perspective here, but we've got defense. There's more defense there as Cutler unable to connect Coach Simpson in coverage. Along with 24, Cody Wells. It'll be second and 10. Of course, Coach, we'll be able to talk more basketball uh, during the half, but as we take another look at this last pass play, George, nothing really there for Cutler. Not, not really. He's just throwing the ball away, look looked like to me. Uh, this kid is a good quarterback, and like you were saying, he's probably going to be one of the top draft picks in the NFL. Coach, your impressions of this game thus far? Well, uh, if you uh, if you like offense, uh, it's probably not the game for you. Uh, you know, it's uh, but if you like defense, uh, you got to be impressed by both sides. Second down and ten. Jennings the lone back, and Cutler Ophita. Jennings trying to find room, but there's nothing there. Carolina's defensive front really winning the. Battle of the line of scrimmage here this afternoon. Jordan Lindsay in on another stop and a timeout on the field. We call his name a whole lot, uh, Lindsay. He, he's playing real good football as a freshman. Well, Coach, that gives us a chance to talk a little bit more. I know you've been uh, awfully busy getting ready for basketball season, and uh, I tell you what, the more and more people I talk to, they're awfully excited about what this team's going to have. Well, we've got a chance, Mike. We really do, uh, as, you, as you know very well from doing our, our broadcasts uh, uh, last year. Uh, we've got uh, four starters, and if you count uh, Ronaldo Baltman, uh, we've got five starters back. And, and, and you know well, that we lost uh, three valuable seniors headed by uh, Carlos Powell and Josh Conner, and, of course, uh, John Chappell had his moments uh, through his four years. Uh, we, we still got a lot of experience back. We're too deep at each position, and, uh, you know, the leadership that we lost in Carlos Powell has to be uh, uh, filled with uh, certain people. I think uh, Tarns Kinsey's trying awfully hard right now to, to fill that spot. He'll do it, but he will not do it the same way. He doesn't have quite the personality that, or the, uh, the forceful personality that Carlos had. But, uh, you know, you've got, uh, uh, you've, you've got, uh, Brandon uh, Wallace, and you've got Trey Kelly, and of course, Ronaldo is another one. The, the guy that I like, though, and, and the one that leads by example is Rocky Trice. He, yeah. he had a great end of the year last year, and he's picked up where he left off last year. And, uh, you know, I, I, I can't say he's playing uh, George at a uh, Heisman level, <laughs> but uh, I'd say he's playing good, pretty good basketball right now, and, uh, you know, I'm really pleased with him. He's one of those uh, least appreciated players in, in the league but uh, certainly one of the most appreciated players by his coaches. Rocky Trice is such a good athlete. You could probably put him in, in pads, and they could find a place for him somewhere on the football field. Yeah, we're, uh, let's, let's talk about that. <laughs> rather, let's not do it. <laughs> Guy weighs 159 on his best day. <laughs> There's already been too much talk about Sidney Rice playing basketball. All these football guys want to play basketball. And why not? And why not? <laughs> Meanwhile, third down and eight from the 29-yard line. Vanderbilt, three out of eight on third down so far today. Cutler's got four wideouts. Looking over the middle. Dropped. Dropped by number 10, Earl Bennett, who's been the go-to guy all day long, but a flag on the field back at the 25-yard line. That's usually a hold, is it not? Uh, offensive no, yep, holding, yeah. especially yeah. if the umpire threw it. And the indication is it is against Vanderbilt. This is one of the things that Vanderbilt have got to stop the, the, the Kid is throwing, doing his best to get the ball down there, Holding but they're not catching On the, the offense, number 62. But That's no matter if they caught it then or not, it down. was going to go back. Yeah, it was. At 62, Ryan King, who is a preseason All-SEC candidate, 6'7", 315 pounds. But again, Carolina really getting a lot of pressure and forcing some penalties so far today. So Vanderbilt going to have to punt the football. Hanfeld back on the field. McKinley back to return. Bobbled snap. He gets away, and now he's going to tuck it and run, and he's going to be short of the marker. He's going to be short of the marker. Jonathan Joseph causing havoc. You had the other defensive back, Fred Bennett, blocking the field goal, and that time Jonathan Joseph helps nullify a successful punt. I just sat down here, and I just noticed. I looked at it, yeah, and I was, what's his name, Hanafel? 
<laughs> I'm saying Hanafel's bad enough, but come on now, you got number 75 kicking. That's right. You can't, no way you're going to have a lineman kicking the ball and going to make a 20-yard uh, run he's got to make there. It's not very often you see a, a kicker or a putter with 75. 75. Yeah. It's like, well, it looked like it was a perfect snap, though. I don't, I don't know how. He just, when he got ready to do it, and, and you know, when I saw 75, I was like, is he that fast? <laughs> Ball just slipped right out of his hands. You got yeah. your answer. <laughs> There's Seville Newton. But oh instead, boy. Mitchell going to go to the air to McKinley at the 35. Oh yeah. Shakes and bakes at the 30. And down past the 25, near another first down. That's what they love about Kenny McKinley. He's one of those track guys. He's got loads and loads of speed and quickness. Just a freshman out of Mableton, Georgia. I don't know if that was a check off at the line, but it certainly was a, a smart play by Blake Mitchell. It was, uh, it was backed off coverage on that side. He just... Uh, he threw it out there and let uh, McKinney get as much as he could. Dave, it wasn't that long ago that you were playing some, some football. <laughs> he sounds like a pro. <laughs> what position were you? Uh, what would you think? <laughs> defensive tackle, nose guard. <laughs> yeah, we had number 11 as a defensive tackle, 75 in the back court. <laughs> no, I played quarterback. I did. No doubt. I knew that. Yeah. I didn't want to square it out. But yeah. I had to be a quarterback to know that kind of play. Yeah. <laughs> the marker shows it is a first down. Do you, a lot of your guys like to come out to the football games? Yeah, they do. Uh, uh, I'm not sure they're here uh, too much uh, longer than a halftime today. We've gone really hard for the last, uh, well, we've had 12 practices in uh, about uh, five and a half days here, so they're, they're kind of beat up. But I, I do think they came up, uh, you know, they were going to come for the first half. And, and, you know, if the game's tight, they'll probably stay for the second. Yards per play, Carolina with a, a slight edge there, but they haven't had enough plays to take a lead here. Savell Newton on another carry. Savell Newton fighting for every yard. Fans are going to appreciate that with a round of applause. A gain of about six. Savell Newton now with seven carries. Well, you got to be impressed with Savell Newton. I mean, just the fact that he can uh, do multiple duty, uh, you know, uh, as, as, a, as a running back and, and certainly a quarterback and a wide receiver, George. You know, that's hard enough to take that punishment every game. But, exactly, uh, and, and that's why that's why Savell Newton is on the sideline right now because uh, those guys out there, those linebackers, there, they hit you, and it, and it ain't no joke. Second and two, Mitchell over the middle, knocked away, intended for McKinley. The 36, Andrew Pace jumping the route and knocking away the football. Blake was lucky to get that one away. They had a backside blitz there, and uh, he was lucky to get that one away. We take another look. Very close to being early here, George. Yeah, it looks real close to being early. Uh, oh, see? Mm. It will, hey, sometimes the ball don't bounce the other way. <laughs> bang, bang. So third down and two now for the Gamecocks. Carolina 0 of 4 on third down today. Be great to get six. Terman and Newton in the eye. It's going to be Savelle. Savelle slicing through near the marker. Going to be another close one. Richard Lankford tripping him up. Savelle needed the 13. I tell you what, Savelle is, is starting to show me something. He's, he's getting it starting to look like he's pretty tough because I saw him a while ago. He was holding his shoulder, and, uh, and right now he's right back in the game, so that shows something. Here we go, guys. Fourth down and short. He is shy of the marker, but another timeout going to be called. Fourth down and inches. The Gamecocks two of nine on fourth down this year. Terman and Newton in an eye formation. Mitchell operating under the center. It's Chris White. Got to get a good snap here. Mitchell to Newton. Hit hard and dropped for a loss, and I don't think he's got it. I think he actually lost yardage on that, Mike. Uh, no, I think the, uh, the uh, Vanderbilt lineman got through and messed up the uh, blocking scheme, and uh, really Savelle had nowhere to go. So Carolina's struggles on fourth down continue. Andrew Pace and that man again, not going to be the last time we call his name, Moses Asif Uji. The six-foot senior out of Nashville, Tennessee, delivering a lick. Be okay if I just call him Moses. That'd be fine. Or number 30, whichever. <laughs> he's He's been called about seven different uh, pronunciations so far this year. I'd be surprised if you saw anything out of Vanderbilt other than the running play here. Now, maybe they will, but with a minute and uh, five to go, at, uh, they've got uh, 85, 86 yards to go. It'd be uh, a surprise to me if they do anything other than run the ball. Yeah, minute five remaining. And a first and ten for the Commodores. And there is a conservative run call there. 
the Gamecocks do have one timeout if they wanted to uh, stop the clock here, but I don't think that's going to be the case. I think both teams right now won't necessarily be happy, but at least content with a 7-7 time. Yeah, you know, you just don't want to go in behind here. Uh, the only reason you would call a timeout here is just to try to maybe, uh, you know, wedge the ball loose on a play, give yourself a little bit more time, and possibly they make a, a fumble and you, you recover it. But uh, I think you're right. I think Coach Burrier is going to be content to uh, go in at 7-7, given the way the game is played. And Vanderbilt will take a knee here, and that should do it for the first half of play. Well, the Commodores came to town hungry for an upset and their defense stingy through the first two quarters as the Gamecocks only able to put seven on the board the Commodores matching that total and we go to the half tied at seven here in Columbia much to come in the halftime show we'll have a chance to talk more with coach Dave Odom about the upcoming basketball season and we'll also talk to a couple of young ladies representing the national championship South Carolina equestrian team. Halftime festivities coming your way. Stay tuned here on CSS. Back with you from williams Price Stadium, Mike Morgan, along with South Carolina head basketball coach Dave Odom. George Rogers will... Uh, be joining us again momentarily. He was honored at the half. Ryan Suckup kicking off, and Vanderbilt will take it out of the end zone. It's Earl Bennett who's had a busy afternoon thus far. Bennett with the spin move at the 25, and he's drug down by a host of Gamecock defenders on the kickoff at about the 28-29 yard line. First half highlights, not a whole lot of them to be frank. Blake Mitchell to the air, 16 yards to Sidney Rice on a jump ball touchdown. But then Mitchell getting a little bit greedy here, throwing into zone coverage. Sharon Thompson picking it off and racing toward the corner for a 13-yard interception return for a touchdown. Vanderbilt then had a chance to take the lead in this ball game, but the field goal was blocked by Fred Bennett. And that was really the only other scoring opportunity in this ball game, that's how we've gotten to this point, tied at seven, as Jennings carries the football for Vandy. Well, uh, we're picking up right where we left off in the first half, uh, Mike. Uh, that was a pitch toss uh, to the short side. Uh, the Gamecocks had it and sniffed out from the very beginning, and uh, uh, no gain, uh, actually a loss on the play. Halftime stats, Vanderbilt, time of possession. That's the key right there, about a nine-minute advantage everything else relatively even neither offense able to get much going in the first half of play here's Cutler again on a bootleg and fires complete to Earl Bennett Earl Bennett has been a busy man Eric Davis came in as their top receiver in fact he's the SEC's active leader in receptions with 115 he has not caught a pass instead it's been the Earl Bennett show I've uh, I've been impressed with uh, Cutler's ability to, to roll out. I think he's, I mean, I, I haven't seen him play that much this year, but uh, he appears to be a, more comfortable on the rollout. Uh, he gets his feet up under him even uh, on the rollout and delivers the ball nicely. I think he, he looks like he's a little bit stayed, a little slow in the pocket to me. First down and 10 for Vanny from the 45. Gamecocks rushing five. Cutler looking for it all. Launches one deep down the far sideline, and there with the coverage is Fred Bennett. In, intended for Earl, Earl Bennett. Again, it's the Bennett Bennett show, but Fred Bennett pretty much had him draped right down the sideline. You can see Bobby Johnson uh, did not uh, like the no call there. He has really given uh, the uh, referee uh, a piece of his mind for sure. Uh, I think the official looks at this and he says, well, that ball's just not going to be caught. And Uncatchable. Yeah. There you go. I just don't think that is going to be caught. No question there was some contact there. If Cutler puts that ball on the money, they probably get the flag. Second down and 10. Commodores lining up Jackson Garrison behind Cutler. Play action again. Over the middle. Caught. Down to the 40. And that is George Smith. Another first down for Vanderbilt. George Smith 
has gotten into the action. That's his second reception, but a flag all the way about seven yards behind the line of scrimmage. Usually that's a late hit on the quarterback. And I think that's going to be the call here. Roughing the passer, number 44 that's of the a, defense. That's a tough call for us right there the because you had the 15-18 uh, yard gain on the play plus another 15 tacked on. It's a, it's a huge gain and that puts our defense in a big hole. Well, that's a, uh, that's a pretty interesting call. Mike West, you watch here. I mean, he gets there right there. I guess because he didn't let him go, they're going to call that. But that's hardly uh, an egregious foul on Mike West. I don't think Jake Cutler even felt it. West goes 211. Cutler's about 230 pounds. And again, you saw he got in there, didn't start off late. So a very favorable call for Vanderbilt, and the ball goes all the way to the 25-yard line of Carolina. Give right side to Jennings. Jennings tripped up, and nothing doing. There is just nowhere to run. As we welcome back South Carolina's finest, George Rogers. <laughs> you know what? Uh, as I come back, you know, the South Carolina defense don't look like they got any better. You know, when you give up penalties and, and, and things they're doing right now, we're not going to win this football game. We've got we to slow ourselves down and start making good, sensible plays. Well, as you know, George, uh, you know, every athletic event is determined more on, uh, you know, penalties and turnovers and uh, mistakes than they are really great plays. And uh, as you mentioned, you know, that uh, uh, the last penalty, the 15-yard on roughing the passer really hurt. Yeah. Second down and 10. This is Vanderbilt's deepest penetration in Carolina territory. From the 25, Cutler under hot pursuit and dropped for a loss. Lance Lorry, boy, he has really picked up his play since the personal foul call against him in the first half. 6'2", 231-pound, a redshirt senior. You got to like his enthusiasm as well because he, he not only is uh, making the play, but he's doing it with enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. The Gamecocks with nine tackles for loss in this ball game. Lance Lorry. Excuse me. Lance Lurie's definitely made a difference in this uh, defense uh, in the first half. But we got to keep on doing it, though. We can't just stop right here. Third down and 12. Gamecock showing blitz. Six on the line. They send five. Cutler throwing off oh, his boy. back foot wide open and caught by number two. That is Eric Davis. We were just talking about how the fact that Davis has been extremely quiet and somehow he I found think. himself on an island over there, guys. He was wide open. I don't see how in the world. I think they went, I think they went man coverage there. I think you're going to see that. And, uh, is, and the man coverage broke down. There you go. There he goes. He runs right past it. There's nobody there. Well, it should have been somebody there. Yeah, they should. <laughs> no question about that. But uh, I think the uh, man coverage broke down. And uh, thank goodness for Coe Simpson again. Yeah, the two safeties, Coe and Brandon Isaac, had to save the day. But it's first and goal from the two. Full house backfield carry for 22. And that's a touchdown. Vanderbilt Jackson Garrison diving into the end zone. And the Commodores have the lead for the first time today. Well, you got to go back to that penalty, too, because that was the thing that opened the uh, door for uh, the, the Commodores. Uh, you know, it wasn't, we were in pretty good shape. We'd held them pretty good. And then that penalty uh, uh, pushed it so far down in Gamecock uh, territory. Extra point splits the uprights, and the lead is seven for Vanderbilt. 14-7 with 11-17 to go in the third quarter of play here on CSS, your source for Southeast Sports. Morgan back with you here on CSS alongside with George Rogers and Dave Odom. Vanderbilt taking the lead on this play. George, not too much uh, complex about this one, just finding the hole. Yeah, and uh, and, uh, and our, once again, our offensive, uh, their, their offensive line is driving our defense players back, and that's where you find those little creases right there. And, uh, the running back took advantage of everybody, giving a little gap and then running, in, running into the end zone. That Vanderbilt drive. Eight plays, 72 yards, took three minutes and 43 seconds, capped off by the Garrison touchdown from two yards out. Uh, but as uh, Dave mentioned, one of the key plays, that penalty on Mike West. There's Noah Whiteside, biggest return 
of the day for the Gamecocks past the 30 and out to the 34-yard line. So pretty good field position to start this drive. Well, we need that. Now it's, uh, it's time for our offense to open up a little bit. It's time for our offense to stand up a little bit and uh, be counted here. Uh, our defense is having to stay on the field too much. And Senator Rice, when he picks up the ball right here, I thought he wouldn't. I didn't think he'd get this many yards out of it. I thought they, they could get good pursuit on us, but that's a pretty good run back. He really is. He's a good, he's very talented. Savelle Newton right now at quarterback, and Blake Mitchell is the wide receiver at the bottom of your screen. He'll be a decoy as Newton's going to take it himself. Newton got the first down and a couple of yards shy of midfield as Savelle Newton trying to pick up where he left off in the first half. Tackle made by Kalichi Ohanaja, another one of those three-year starters for the Commodores. You know what I think uh, Coach Burry is doing is a very smart thing here. He, you know, he leaves Blake Mitchell in, puts him as a wide receiver, really probably not going to throw to him, but uh, it doesn't give the defense long to adjust, uh, uh, you know, because they don't know where Savelle's going to be, and uh, Blake really is not going to catch the ball out here, so it doesn't give him a lot of time to adjust. That's smart uh, maneuver by Coach Burry. Tough numbers on the day, as you see, for Blake Mitchell. He has struggled thus far. He's going to go to the air here. Pump fake. Now he's trying to dance out of trouble. Now fires complete at the 40, and that is seldom used Carson Askins, the tight end, the 6'2 junior out of Hemingway. That's just his third catch of the year, number 83. Remember, Andy Boyd is still injured. They hope to have him back soon, but Askins finding an open area. Well, and Blake doing a, a nice job of scrambling a little bit, buying himself a little bit more time. And, and it's throwing a strike. I mean, these are the kind of things that South Carolina needs to do. As that said again with Blake Mitchell deep, uh, wide. Blake Mitchell this time at the top of your screen. And it's going to be Terman probing the left side on the carry. And another good tough run. Seems like every time Terman gets a carry, we always wind up saying tough run because he's a, <laughs> a tough character, a tough four yards right there, George. There's no doubt about it. And, uh, Thurman, uh, I, I ducked his Thurman. I, I think he would like to get the ball a whole lot more, but when you got um, uh, Savelle in there, it's just not going to happen. And, hey, i like to see him get the ball with more, more touches. i like to see that. Mitchell now back under center. Twins to the right side. Man in motion, that's Terman. Mitchell, quick drop. Mitchell looking and throws underneath for Rice, but incomplete. Sharon Thompson on the coverage. Think as Terman reminds you of those fullbacks who used to line up in front of you and block for you, George? That, uh, just a little bit, but he gets, he gets more carries than they did. <laughs> George would take another look. Right, right here, I, you see, I don't think Blake is getting his feet set, and then he, he's trying to make a quick decision, and nobody's really open. He, he needs to... Um, we try to throw the ball to the outside a little bit more. Third down and six. Another critical third down play for the Gamecocks. South Carolina has struggled on third down today. Blake Mitchell lined up as a receiver. Bottom of your screen. Newton at quarterback. Newton rolling out right side. Newton smells the first down. He's got it. And steps out of bounds at the 25-yard line. And how about a great block by Blake Mitchell? How about that? <laughs> Well, if you ain't going to throw the ball, you might as well get out there and block somebody. Well, he did. I hope we hope we got that on camera. Watch this. this guy, that's outstanding. And I said he was a decoy. I said he was very important here in this play. Well, he's a big, strong kid. He you know, it's not like he can't do it. And look at that. Good block. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> don't, want, don't know if I want him to do it with his back too many times. Though. No, but uh, he's a tough kid. I tell you, he's laying it all out there for the Gamecocks. And uh, hopefully, uh, you know, it'll pay dividends as we go along. 11 rushes, 61 yards for Newton, who's in the shotgun, going to take it himself. Newton, drug down inside the 20-yard line, about five yards shy of the first down for the Gamecocks. This uh, really the most impressive drive we've seen in the while. Carolina had only two first downs. And right now, you know Savelle's going to take off running right from the very, very get-go. But, you know, I don't think it's very wise to run Newton that this many times because you might get tired. Of, you know, when you get tired, you start to relax your arms. You don't want to fumble right here now. Gamecocks with only two first downs coming into this drive now. Eight for the game. Second down and six. McKinley in motion. Mitchell looks over the middle. In the traffic complete to Sidney Rice, and that's another first down. 
Jackson. A dangerous throw. Had to thread the needle on that one. He threw it in there so hard. So he wouldn't, if, if he would have hit him on the arm, he probably broke it. But Sidney Rice is a great receiver, and he holds on to it, Coach. He has got great, great hands. He really does. And uh, I tell you what, that takes great concentration to catch that ball as well. you got to have your eyes glued on that. You can't be looking for, uh, you know, people that are going to hit you. you got to be looking at that. you got to be looking to make the catch. Yeah. Just the second reception for Rice. The other one, of course, the touchdown back in the first half. First down and 10 from the 11. Here's Newton on the carry and could not get his footing early on and will suffer a slight loss on the play. Well, he's uh, uh, certainly a moldable back. There's no question about that. He did get tripped up. Uh, you know, maybe our turf's in too good a shape there. I don't know. It, uh, <laughs> I looked at there. It's amazing. You know, we've only got two games to go after this one, and uh, it looks like he's hardly been played on. Hey, I've seen basketball players trip up on a gym, and there's no excuse for that. So. Well, they got, we got very, very uh, thick lines out there. <laughs> <laughs> Second down and 10. Newton's at the top of your screen. Noah Whiteside in the slot. It goes to Newton. Newton's looking to throw. He's got a man. Touchdown, Carolina. It's Carson Askins. How about that play? <laughs> Steve Spurrier's been saving that one for a while, and the Gamecocks have a chance to tie this baby up. Yeah, a little trickery, I think. That's really good football, man. That is. <laughs> that is really good football. I mean, he was he was wide, wide open. open. All you got to do is get it up here on that one. 11 yards on the touchdown pass from Newton to Askins. I guess you could give Blake Mitchell <coughs> an assist on that one. So the game is tied at 14. Newton with four rushes, 29 yards on the drive. One pass for 11 yards. And the 7.27 remaining in the third quarter, we are tied at 14. Class play from the cheerleaders to the fans. And of course, that man, head coach Steve Spurrier of the South Carolina Gamecocks. We haven't seen a whole lot of trickery this year. I think coach has been saving some of that for the second half of the year, but that one of the more entertaining plays of the season. It, it is good for a game cut touchdown. Tie game. Here's Bennett on the return. Bennett trying to break free to the outside, the 25, the 30, and out of bounds at the 33-yard line. He seems to break, uh, go in. He gets in behind his uh, his his blockers, and uh, you know, always seems to break to his right side. I don't know if it was a breakdown over there on our part, or whether he's just uh, uh, you know given to doing that type thing. Well, let's see how Vanderbilt will respond now as we take another look at that scoring drive. Nine plays, 65 yards, three minutes and 50 seconds off the clock, and it was, uh, in more ways than one, the Savelle Newton drive. Three-headed monster. Stephen Bright is the fullback on this play for Vandy. Cutler to the air. Cutler fires complete to Earl Bennett. And Bennett finally drug down at the 40. It'll be a gain of eight. Just a simple curl pattern. Uh, went down and uh, found a seam in there about eight yards down. And uh, Cutler put it on the money. He's one of the, he's one of the best quarterbacks in, in, the, in the SEC. And, uh, he shows why by uh, hitting the receiver. And then... The receivers got to catch the ball. I tell you, that, that's what they got to do to, to be able to win this game. Jake Cutler, 12 of 19, 127 yards through the air thus far. Second and two here, Vandy from the eye. And the give is to Jennings, and he is dropped for a loss. Chris Tucker, another game cut tackle behind the line of scrimmage. That is 10 now. They just cannot run the, uh, the football. They nope. really cannot. Yeah, I don't know whether uh, I don't know what the rushing totals uh, you know show for the year, but uh, we sure we certainly have sniffed out every uh, running play they've they've had. <laughs> well, we have, but we it's no consolation because we haven't been doing a very good job of running the football either. Third down and three. Vanderbilt four of ten on third down. Gamecocks rushing for Cutler, settles in the pocket, finds a man complete past midfield, and that's Dustin Dunning, the tight end, once again. 
Again, Vanderbilt will use the tight end as much as any team in this league. Well, you got to give you got to give Cutler a lot of credit. He had plenty of time, and he just was just a little, little little touch right there. Just throw the ball down there, and the guy's right there. Hey, Bobby Johnson. Hey, the guy got some skills. <laughs> he uh, they they threw underneath <clears throat> the coverage there. They let the the, uh, the backs. Uh, Backup gave a lot of yardage there, and uh, they threw underneath it and let the guy run for it. Dunning a big target at 6'5", 250 pounds. First and 10, again play action. Cutler lofting it deep down the far sideline. That's a free ball and incomplete. Boy, Bennett looked like the intended receiver on that one. Looked like the Vandy wideout kind of gave up on the play. Yeah, he dropped it. I guess he felt. Uh, I guess he felt he was going out of bounds. There, wasn't going to be able to catch it anyway. And uh, our our defender was certainly had the advantage Ooh. on no question. He dropped it. Bennett. Yeah, exactly. Bennett had that had that ball with two feet in. He just could not bring it down. Kurt Bennett would like to have that one back. So it is second and ten. Brighton Jennings behind Jake Cutler, operating under center. Cutler give and look at that Stanley Doty looked like he was in the huddle and then came out of the backfield on that one I mean he got there in a heartbeat and there was no chance we've been seeing a lot of this today and uh, hey it's, it's unusual to see this because we hadn't did it all year and when you make big plays like that you don't know this right here can lift your defense up and get everybody else fired up to doing some of these kind of things now you can see the defense come alive out there as well. There's some excitement. They're asking for the crowd to get into the game. And this is a really, really, really good uh, big football play right here. And a timeout call. I think Vanderbilt realizes how important it is. They need to make the right call themselves. Well, Stanley Doty is a, a, about a biscuit away from 340. How you, how you don't block <laughs> him, I'll never know. But he came free on that last play. <laughs> 4.33 remaining in the third quarter. Game tied at 14 here on CSS, your source for Southeast sports today. Well, that's been the story defensively for South Carolina. 11 tackles for loss, 33 yards of lost yardage for the Vanderbilt offense. 11 tackles for loss by far is a season high for this Carolina defense. And Vanderbilt for the second straight year really struggling to run the football. 29 carries, just 34 yards. And that defense right there fired up. Look at that, laughing, smiling, and not a whole lot of huffing and puffing. They, they look like they're in good shape right now. Something that we ain't seen all year. Exactly. Third down and 15. Here's Cutler. Avoids the rush. Steps up. Oh, fires boy. a ball deep. He's got a man, and it's incomplete. He underthrew Earl Bennett and allowed Brandon Isaac to knock that ball away. But, fellas, Earl mm. Bennett was behind that secondary. He certainly was. And I tell you, if it, if it was a little bit quicker on the, on the release, he would have been there, too. He just underthrew this guy. And uh, good thing the guy looked back, too. Now, hey. He still probably would have caught the ball had he needed to look back. So a tough play there for the Commodores. They'll be forced to punt it. And back to receive is Whiteside from the 15. No, that's McKinley, rather. And he'll be buried at the 15. Nowhere to go on that one. McKinley had no shot. So the Gamecock offense back out onto the field. What tricks does Steve Spurrier have in mind for this possession? We've seen Mitchell at quarterback. We've seen Newton at quarterback. We've seen Mitchell make a block from the receiver position. We've seen Mitchell throw to Newton, and then Newton throw to the end zone for a touchdown. Well, I tell you, if, if South Carolina wants to take over this football game, this is the perfect time to do it, is to go down there and get us some more points. Updated numbers on Blake Mitchell, 6 out of 16, 79 yards. Touchdown and INT, and now he's lined up as a wide out top of your screen. And the give is to take us Terman. Well, Vanderbilt has done a pretty good job of stopping the run today. Really, the best runs of the day have been from Savelle Newton from the quarterback spot. I like to see him give it to Douglas Thurman two or three times in a row, and, you know, instead of giving it to him just once every 
every blue moon. <laughs> yeah, well, I, 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 that's that's something you harp on every week, George. Running backs need to get a rhythm. Termin 18 carries last week, just four thus far today. Second and seven. Mitchell looking over the middle, surveys, fires, and completes it to Rice. Rice breaks a tackle, busts it outside, and is brought down just shy of midfield. Sidney Rice on a long pass play, and Carolina has another first down after a 31-yard game. I, I will tell you, Sidney Rice has speed, he has quickness, he has great hands, but I'll tell you something else he has that other great receivers have, only great receivers have, he has a great presence for where the defense is after he catches a football. You can tell right there he gave up a little, good, little bit of ground in order to get some back, and he is really, really, he's got a great uh, presence about, about where he is. Pressure on Blake Mitchell taking the hit, and he's not afraid to do that. Has a lot of poise in the pocket. Sidney Rice, the reigning SEC Freshman of the Week. First and 10, Mitchell fires far sideline. There is Noah Whiteside, and he's got another Gamecock first down. Noah Whiteside, that's just his seventh reception of the year. He's been very quiet this season. He's trying to overcome that ankle injury going back to the spring game. And, George, he's a guy that they would love to get more involved in the offense. No, no doubt about it. And Blake Mitchell throws this ball with a little zip on it. And that's what makes this a good play is because North Whiteside, he's going to catch the football, but he, Blake Mitchell's got to get it there. It would be a real blessing to our Gamecock offense if we could get North Whiteside uh, healthy again and, you know, catching his share of passes. Newton going to play some quarterback on this play. And he will hand it off to Terman, who barrels forward for about a yard. That's not what you had in mind, was it, George? <laughs> no, no, not at all. Not at all, Coach. And look like he, he's here. He said, well, here, George, hear what you want and see what's, see what's happening. No, you're not like that, Newton. If anything, Newton should have went on around to the, on, on the other side. Well, that was a slow developing play. It really was. You can see it coming from the outset. But uh, that's probably a play that's going to set up something uh, like you were talking about, a fake, and then, uh, of course, Newton keeping it to the outside. Newton, the quarterback. Mitchell, the receiver. Newton gets the snap. He's looking to throw. Play breaks down. Now he's going to throw, and he's got Rice at the 15, at the 10, at the 5, puts the ball over the plane. Touchdown, Carolina. The Sydney Rice Show continues, and another fine play by Savelle Newton as well. 34 yards. The Gamecocks take the lead. Mike, you couldn't have said it no better. Here he is. Give Savelle a lot of credit. He, you always think he's going to run the ball anyway, and he throws the ball over his back shoulder. <laughs> yeah, it makes a great play. And then Sicilian Rice, he just takes it on in the end zone. Yeah, he was running. That was a difficult pass. He was running right to left. <laughs> Josh Brown true on the extra point, and the lead is 7 21 14 with 209 remaining in the third quarter of play as Sidney Rice. His second touchdown reception of the game, his fourth grab overall, 89 yards, another look. Coach, you're a quarterback. Could you have thrown this ball like that? <laughs> That's the opposite direction, ain't it? <laughs> it's really, uh, you know, something people look at that, and I'm not sure it's really as hard as everybody thinks because you, you, you don't, if you're going uh, left or right there, it's a, you know, you got to stop and, and plant your feet and throw it. He, he can throw this on the move. <laughs> South Carolina drive, five plays, 84 yards, two minutes and four seconds off the clock. And again, Newton to Rice for 34 yards and the score. Mike, it looks like our athletes are beginning to take over right now. The speed and quickness in our back uh, feel, our offensive line is doing a good job of keeping the uh, defensive line of Vanderbilt in check and giving uh, people like Savelle and and Sydney and uh, Blake and Dacus and those guys, uh, uh, Noah Whiteside, even a chance to, uh, you know, to use their speed, their quickness, and their athleticism. And uh, of course, they will see Coach Spurrier, who's uh, uh, masterminding it all from the uh, sideline. You know, it's been a while since Carolina has had two game-breaking receivers. Sydney Rice being one, and then whenever Savelle is out there, you know, that's another one. And uh, it, it's a lot of fun to watch. There you see both those guys. I mean. If you can get the ball in those guys' hands, good things are, are going to happen, and that's been the story so far today. Well, I, you know, we was talking about this a, long, a while back, but I tell you, the, um, 
Blake Mitchell is the one that's starting to play pretty well. Is indeed. He's become a little more accurate in this second half, and now Vanderbilt with a pretty good return out near the 30-yard line. Coach uh, Johnson's teams always seem to play pretty well on special teams. Of course, Coach Bobby Johnson, a, a story that South Carolinians are very familiar with. As a teenager, he sold soft drinks at Gamecock games, later became a three-sport star at Eau Claire High School. He played at Clemson and then coached at Furman for quite some time and did about as fine a job as, as you can do there. Took him to the finals where they lost to Montana. Total yards this quarter. Carolina all but doubling up Vanderbilt, 149 to 74. Cutler fires in the flat, complete to Earl Bennett. Earl Bennett's been a busy man. That is his seventh grab on the afternoon. I know you've got to keep running the football, but uh, I'd be surprised if uh, Vanderbilt messes much more with the run. They've gotten almost nothing out of that. Well, uh, you know, at least uh, from a passing standpoint, they, they've got a chance to pick up some short yardage, if, if not some uh, on occasionally a longer one. Be interesting to see if we set our defense that way. Second down and seven yards to go. Bright and Jackson Garrison in the backfield behind Cutler. There's Chris Tucker. He's had a big afternoon. Him and Doty, the defensive tackles. Pass over the middle, complete at the 45. Busting it outside. That's Earl Bennett again. He'll pick up a couple extras before Coach Simpson drags him down. Well, no question. <laughs> Somewhere in that game plan, it said, throw the ball to Earl Bennett a lot, and that's his eighth reception. Earl Bennett and uh, Coach Simpson, uh, they're, going, they're hooked at the hip right now. <laughs> Where you see one, you see the other. No doubt. That's a nice strike there by Cutler. He throws a pretty ball. Jay Cutler, the active SEC leader in total offense, 11th all time, has a chance to move up the ranks in the top 10. First down and 10 from the 47 for the Commodores. Here's Bright. Now a little trickery on the reverse. It's Bennett. And Carolina read it all the way. Nothing doing there as Brandon Isaac trips up Bennett for a big loss. And that could be a drive killer. Do something like this you got to make sure it's going to work and right now South Carolina just read it out and, hey we need some plays like this if we're going to win some games like this here's another stat to try on for size Vanderbilt Vanderbilt rushing this half seven carries negative 19 yards it's a lot more pressure to put on Jake Cutler as the third quarter will come to a close. Well, Coach, we certainly appreciate the time. Look forward to basketball season coming up here soon, and won't be long before uh, we're talking about hoops as well as football. Well, I want it noted now. When I came in, it was 7-7. It's 21-14. Uh, I'm turning this game over to you and George. <laughs> By pitching standards, you're going to get the win. George and I are going to look for the save. Well, at, at least at least I won't get the loss. There you go. There you go. All Coach, right. thank you so Great much. Great to see you time. guys. You know it. That's going to do it for the third quarter of play. Fourth quarter coming up with the Gamecocks up by a touchdown. Seven-point lead over the Commodores. Auburn has won 13 consecutive SEC games. Can they make it 14 in a row against a tough LSU squad? Catch an SEC matchup between Auburn and LSU Sunday at 9 on CSS. Coach Steve Spurrier now getting ready for the next drive. Talking to his quarterback. Blake Mitchell, meantime, second and 21 for the Commodores. Pass complete to Stephen Bright. Young man out of Greer, Riverside High School, who was one of the top quarterbacks in the state of South Carolina and came to Vandy as a quarterback. They say he's just too good of an athlete to leave off the field entirely. Third quarter stats, a little bit of a different story. Total yards, Carolina racking up 262. And the penalties... Yeah. Penalties uh, all told for this game. These are not just third quarter stats. That's through the end of three quarters. I was just going to say they're racking up. I was going to say, I'm about to check the record book. If that was just for the third quarter, but that is through three quarters. 
And the uh, stats starting to even up now and even go into Carolina's favor after an impressive third quarter of play as a penalty flag has been dropped here. Prior to the snap, false start. Number 10 to the offense. Five-yard penalty, still third right, down. So that's a no-no. That's Earl Bennett. Mm -hmm. And if you're a wide receiver, you've, you've got to know better. Yeah, because you get the, you, you get the advantage of, of looking inside and seeing when the ball snap. Bobby Johnson right now talking to his coaches upstairs saying, how in the world does a receiver jump early? All you got to do is look at the football. You don't have to hear anything. So that makes it third down and a cheap cab ride. 22 yards to be exact. The Commodores need to get to the Gamecock 43. Cut in the pocket. Now flushed out. Throws over the middle. Dangerous pass. Tipped up in the air and picked off. That's Jonathan Joseph at the 40. 35-30, looking for a block, and now slides safely into the 30-yard line. But an interception and a key one at that for Jonathan Joseph, the junior, out of Rock Hill, South Carolina. Couldn't 30 came yards of, on the return. Couldn't have came out. Sorry about that. Couldn't have came on a better time, Mike. I mean, these defensive backs are supposed to be one of the best, in, I mean, uh, four of the best in the SEC, and this is why it's like a tip drill. And Jonathan, had he, had he start, kept kept running, I think he would have been able to get more yards, but you know, hey, we got the interception. Here's the pressure on Jake Cutler on that last play. That's a familiar sight. Guys right in his face on several of the throws today. And the guy who was making the pressure there, that is 95 Nathan Pepper, a true freshman out of Greenville, South Carolina. It's a handoff up the middle. It looked like Bobby Wallace from here. And it was Bobby Wallace, his first carry of the day, 5'7", 180-pound freshman out of Conway, the first player signed by Steve Spurrier at South Carolina. Well, once again, we're getting a, a, a little bit of, of a sense that South Carolina has got to do something with the ball and uh, put this game, they help put this game on out of the way. Blake Mitchell is at receiver, Newton at quarterback. Throwing to the other side, that's Wallace. Wallace makes a move at the 35. Now inside the 30 and tripped up and brought down at about the 27-yard line. So it'll set up a third down and long. Good defense by Vanderbilt. Some other scores to pass along to you. Tennessee and Alabama scoreless in the third quarter of play as we take another look. Savelle off his back feet through the ball. I mean, uh, you weren't going to get very much out of that play, but at least we got back to the line of scrimmage. Texas now pouring it on. The Red Raiders of Texas Tech 38 to 10 in the third quarter. Mitchell going to fire complete to Rice on a square in. Sidney Rice starting to heat up now. That's his fifth reception, and he is over the century mark for the second consecutive week. Uh, Mike, you, you can say that he's heating up, but you can also say, also say that Blake is doing a pretty good job of, of throwing in those passing lanes that we were talking about earlier. Right. He, you know, he had the, the interception where he threw it right to the Vanderbilt defense, but right now he's, he's firing some strikes. So he, his balls are right on the money, and it's first and ten from the 14. Newton from the gun. Newton's going to run. Makes a move at the 15. Jitterbugs at the 12 and down <laughs> to the 11. He is exciting to watch. Got those quick feet, George. <laughs> what did you say? Jitterbug. I like the way you say that. <laughs> uh, you better get a, he better get used to not doing that down there because when you get in that red zone and you're doing a lot of tap dancing, usually that ball is going one way and you're trying to go the other. So, so well, if you got to keep it north and south, buddy. Second down and seven. Every play. Vanderbilt's got to wonder who's going to be the quarterback. No is, doubt. Is it going to be Newton or is it going to be Mitchell? This time, it will be Newton. Mitchell started under center. Now he lines up on the right side. Newton going to throw over the end zone. Incomplete. That one lofted on him. He was trying to hit the tight end, Carson Askins. I'll tell you what, with a little strength, he threw that. He threw it. It wasn't like it wasn't, like it wasn't going to be intercepted or anything. Newton. 
Look at that. He wound back and he threw that. He threw that ball pretty well. I mean, it was over everybody's head, but he, he threw it hard. Yeah, he's got strength in that arm. They just want him to be a little bit more accurate. Timeout on the field as Vandy will burn one and will burn it with him. 11.09 remaining in the fourth quarter. Gamecocks up by seven on CSS. And seven. Blake Mitchell at quarterback. Handoff. That's Newton. Newton at the five. Spin move. Another spin. Newton lunges forward. Give it to him. Touchdown. What a pretty play by Savelle Newton. And the Gamecocks tack on another six. It's 27-14. A 10-yard scamper by Savelle Newton. That three-headed monster. Uh-oh. Look like he's look like he's a little shaken up a little bit, but hopefully, ankle. hopefully this is not that bad. Savell, so hey, you can't coach this. I mean, you know, you, the guy's got quick feet. I mean, when he when he sees something, he knows what to do with it. And and, and what a great effort to try to get the ball in the end zone, and he got it in there. Uh, hey, hey. I'm hoping that he's going to be all right, and uh, I'm sure hoping that uh, South Carolina fans are, are holding their breath. But hey, I think he's he's a, he's a he's a strong kid. He's going to be all right. He's holding that left ankle. That's a good sign. He's up to his feet. The other thing to be the least bit concerned about here is whether or not they would actually take a replay on that one just to see the spot as we take another look. I just hope it ain't his knee. Field judge there, you see, signaling touchdown. Josh Brown on to try the extra point. Josh Brown, the senior out of Clarksburg, Maryland, splits the uprights, and the Gamecocks now lead it by 14. Well, well one thing about it is that if, if you have got Savelle Newton hurt, you, that, that destroys the three-headed monster, that's for sure. But I think we got other guys on this football team that can make can, can make good big plays. And uh, uh, I don't I don't know if this uh, is a, a good job of running or just a a bad job of tackling it because of the fact that Newton's hurt now. <laughs> and See, well, with, by the time that knee does hit the ground, the ball is across the plane. So a good call there by the officiating crew. And we'll try to see if Savelle Newton is good enough to get back in this game or not. Obviously, he will be a key the rest of the year for South Carolina. And no doubt. how about Newton? Uh, 15 carries, 80 yards, and a touchdown there. He's also caught one pass for eight yards. And he's thrown four passes, completed three of them, and he's got two touchdown passes to his credit. So uh, when it's all said and done, this could go down as one of the best all-around games in Gamecock history. Well, they, 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 they're really walking with him gingerly, and he can't even put any pressure on that leg. I, I, I tend to wonder whether it's his knee or his ankle because of the fact, well, they took his sock off, so it's definitely his ankle. Now, Savelle Newton now. Helped off the field. The man that we highlighted uh, back in the open of the broadcast had a feeling this might be a special day for Savelle Newton. It has been, and hopefully it won't end with any type of serious injury. Meanwhile, the Gamecocks are going to kick it back to Vanderbilt. And you got to wonder, George, if the Commodores are not able to get a drive going here, you know, they're... Uh, they're window of opportunity is closing in a hurry. It really is. And uh, if South Carolina wants to win this football game, it really was up on their defense anyway. We thought our offense was going to score some points, but you know, it, when you when you get to, when you get a team down like this and they're down by two touchdowns, the defense has got to start putting more pressure on. Earl Bennett and Jackson Garrison are lined up at the five, ready to return the kickoff from Suckup, which odds are he gets it in the end zone. We'll see what he does here. Not a whole lot of wind here today. And a beautiful afternoon. This is short for Suckup. Boy, that might be the shortest kickoff for Suckup all year, but it might have been intentional. Return for Jackson Garrison, and now he's got a convoy along the near sideline, and he's out all the way near the 40. Either he got under it or they decided to try to 
pooch it in there, the element of surprise, but either way, it's a, a gift for Vanderbilt of sorts as they'll have good field position. Yeah, when you start on the 40-yard 40 line, 40 line, it's definitely an advantage for the, other, for the offensive team. But I don't know. South Carolina's been playing real good defense, and we just got to hope that they are, are not tired and, 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 and really wants to win this football game. First and 10 from the 38-yard line. Jake Cutler has got to get something going here because the running game has been non-existent for Vanderbilt. Pass tipped and almost picked off. That was Mike West, the linebacker out of Ocala, Florida, covering Eric Davis, and he had him blanketed. He really did, and uh, had we got that one right there, uh, Mike, I think this game would have been one of, the, one, of those, uh, one of those Western songs. I forget what it is, but it would have been one of them. <laughs> I don't know if it's Western, but turn out the lights, the party's over. That's it's, right. Don Meredith used to sing that one. I'm not sure what uh, particular musical category will we'll put that one in. Second down and 10. Cutler from the pocket. Fires almost a nice grab by Bennett, but good coverage by Jonathan Joseph. He's had a pretty good game. Yeah, he really has. Him and uh, Fred Bennett both, I think, have had a solid ball game for that Carolina secondary. Of course, Coach Simpson, we always expect to see a good game from him. Yeah, he put the ball in there, but the, but the uh, defensive back is right there at the same time the, the ball gets there. In the fourth quarter, they're still scoreless. Tennessee and Alabama. That ball game from Tuscaloosa will keep you posted on that. Numbers on Jake Cutler. So-so, nothing great, nothing terrible, but they're going to need a little bit more out of Cutler in this fourth quarter. He lets it loose over the middle, complete, and that'll be a Vanderbilt first down. George Smith with a, another reception for Vanny. Smith now with his third catch. You know, if you're going to give Cutler this kind of time, he's going to complete passes. Now, now on the other hand, Vanderbilt receivers are starting to catch him, too. So... We need, we need our, defensive, our defensive line to step up and start making some sacks. A shotgun and a four wide for Cutler. Try to pump and go. Now he's going to throw deep. There's that man again, and there is a Vanderbilt touchdown. Earl Bennett getting behind the defense, and just as we started praising that secondary, Fred Bennett lets Earl Bennett get behind him for the score. 41 yards on the touchdown and Vanderbilt has come storming back here. I give Cutler a lot of credit because he pumps him and then he fakes and then he throws it on the run. What a great throw. He, he couldn't nobody have intercepted that. The receiver made a great catch and now Vanderbilt is back in the game. So the Commodores now with a chance to cut the Gamecock lead back to seven and there's going to be a penalty and that might have been on Fred Pennant. Well, that'd be a double whammy of sorts. I'll tell you, it, it gets hard to look at 75 on a kicker's jersey and take it seriously. <laughs> Offsides. Number eight of the defense. The penalty's declined. We'll have the try. And it was on Fred Bennett. So here is the extra point attempt by Hanfeld. The snap, the hold, the kick, and it is good. 28 to 21 with a little over 10 minutes remaining in this ball game. And we will take a timeout. Don't you go away. There is the man that caught the last touchdown pass for the Vanderbilt Commodores, Earl Bennett. He has been Busy, nine catches, 105 yards, and a touchdown. Cutting the Gamecock lead to seven. And just a moment ago, Savell Newton, here's the bad news. Uh, we know the good news. He's done just about everything you can at three different positions today. But you see that left ankle taped up heavily and a, a lot of pain disguised under that towel right now on Savell Newton's face. And Steve Spurrier, obviously, he's concerned about that. But he's got to also be concerned about What's going to transpire in these final 10 minutes as the Gamecocks only up by seven points. A big drive right here for Carolina. Carlos Thomas going to take it out of the end zone. He's got some daylight on the near sideline. Now tries a cutback. And we'll finally go down just past the 20-yard line. 
Well, I do, I do know this. That our offensive uh, has have done some good, jo did a good job out there. But one thing about it is, if the defense has helped us out so much, the offensive's got to go down here and score some points and and to win this football game. And uh, they've been looking good so far, though. We take a look at the scoring drive for Vanderbilt. Just four plays, 61 yards, and well, that's a Steve Spurrier time of possession. Just 44 seconds <laughs> as Cutler connecting 41 yards. The Gamecocks, meanwhile, as Mike Davis gets his first carry of the afternoon, and a nice run right near the marker, a gain of 10. The Gamecocks are three for three on drives this half. Nine plays, 65 yards. Five plays, 84 yards. And the last one, six plays for 30 yards. So what I like about this play, Mike, is that he has a chance to go up to the outside. We're not getting very much up the middle, so you might as well try to go outside. Mike Davis, the true freshman out of nearby Columbia High School, came in with just 49 carries, 172 yards. Here is Kenny McKinley on an end around. McKinley lunges forward past the 40. And a solid gain there. It'll be second down and three for Carolina. I'm impressed with our uh, receivers. Uh, we got a lot of them too. They, they don't. They don't just stop at at, at Rice. They. We got some more guys that can play uh, a real good receiver out there. And uh, Thiesberg is using all of them. Rashard Langford, the tackle for Vanderbilt. Second and three, Mitchell goes to the air. Low pass, scooped up by Sidney Rice. Sidney Rice makes a move, and he's got another first down. Boy, Rice is not just a big target, but when he gets the ball in his hands, he makes things happen. He really does. And we can talk about it all night until we're black and blue. That this kid here is going to be a good receiver, and he makes a move right here to prove that, hey, he's a big-time receiver. Sidney Rice. Six catches, 110 yards now, and two scores. Look out, Sterling Sharp. <laughs> yeah, I mean, only a freshman, Rice has got a chance to put up a lot of gaudy numbers. Here's yeah. Davis again, but not as big a hole as the last time. No gain on the play. You know, we joke and say that, but uh, Sidney Rice has got a long way to go to get Sterling Sharp. <laughs> no, cer certainly does. And, you know, I, I talked about earlier the fact that it's been a while since we've seen Carolina with two game-breaking receivers, and mm -hmm. you got to go back really to, to Sterling Sharp and Robert Remember Brooks and, and, and Robert Bethea. Bethea. Yeah. yeah, I mean that's that was uh, that was a special era in, in Gamecock football. Since then, there's been some good guys. I mean, Troy Williamson was fantastic, a no. first-round pick, but he didn't have a lot of guys around him that could do those type of things as well. Mitchell, seven-step drop, looking over the middle, but deflected at the line. You know, being, it, being as tall as uh, Mitchell is, I, it surprises me that he has this kind of, uh, this, these kind of balls batted back like that because he's a tall individual himself. You know, when you do, drop back in the pocket and you throw it downfield, and he's a tall guy, and they have the ball batted down like that. Of course, you guys are going to put their hands up on the end. But, but Blake uh, usually, uh, usually is a pretty good pass. Big old 98, Lamar Divins deflecting that pass. He's... 64305 himself. That's a guy that hadn't missed too many meals <laughs> in his lifetime. Third down and a long 10. And confusion will cause the Gamecocks to burn their second time out of the half. So Blake Mitchell will go to the sideline, talk things over with Coach Steve Spurrier. And with under eight minutes remaining in this game, the Gamecocks try and attack on to a seven-point lead here on CSS. Carolina leading with 7.49 remaining in this ball game. On Wednesday, Georgia quarterback D.J. Shockley was named one of seven finalists for the Johnny Unitas Golden Arm Award, presented annually to the nation's top senior quarterback, Shockley, and the Bulldogs host Arkansas Tuesday at 7 on CSS. Alongside George Rogers, former Heisman Trophy winner, New Orleans Saint, Washington Redskin. Mike Morgan with you here on CSS. The Gamecocks trying to get a little insurance here. They go to McKinley. McKinley makes a move at the 50. McKinley down to the 46-yard line, three yards shy 
of the first down. So it will be fourth down, and the Gamecocks will punt it away. Right here, uh, guys, but it just, this is not a play that you want, <laughs> you want to get your receiver killed on. But uh, uh, give Vanderbilt a lot of credit. They made a good play on the, uh, on the offensive play. Earl Bennett Earl the lone Bennett back to receive this Josh Brown punt, which in all likelihood will be another rugby effort. He rolls to his right, and over end kick. It'll take that forward bounce at the 20, and Vanderbilt falling on it. Bennett saw that, it. yeah, saw that one of his teammates might have touched it, so better safe than sorry. Just dive on the football. That's a smart play. No doubt. Well, Vanderbilt's got a long way to go now. We'll take another look and see if Bennett had every reason to dive on this football. It'll be on the right-hand side of your screen. Hard to tell on that angle. Yeah, because anything looked like one of our guys. Does. The closest Vanderbilt player was 13, Jason Burns. All right, now, defense, come on now. First down and 10 from the 13-yard line. Carolina with a four-man front. Cutler. Another tackle for loss. Cutler is brought down and brought down hard by DeAdrian Coley. Here's a guy in Coley who was relegated to backup duty. He's kind of been buried in that depth chart here for the last few weeks. But, George, he's trying to make a statement today. No doubt about it. And not, you know, you got to give Coach Burgess a lot, a lot of credit because he, take, he makes sure that these guys know, hey, if you're going to play defense on this team, you've got to make plays. Tell you, I don't, I don't think Vanderbilt can run on this Gamecock team. They're going to have to keep throwing with Cutler. Here's a strike. Look at that bullet caught past the 30 by Earl Bennett. That is an NFL throw right there. And no doubt about it. This, uh, everything that Cutler's, uh, they said about Cutler is really true. This kid has got an arm on him, and he, he got a lot of poise, too, because he's on our own goal line down there. Drop it back, pass it. 26 yards on that howitzer delivery. I mean, that was a strike. It had to be on a line. First and 10 from the 34-yard line. Cutler, man in his face on a blitz throw. It was a little too high. Looking for his tight end again. That's Dustin Dunning. They did a lot of this, Mike. They've been throwing to that tight end an awful lot today. And I think South Carolina is really trying to cover him in the middle there. But Cutler threw this a little, a little bit high. And uh, this, this is one of the passes the receivers don't like to catch because this is one of the passes where he might get hurt on. Second down and 10, you would think, George, uh, the guy they might keep looking for is Earl Bennett. He's got a career high 132 receiving yards today, 10 receptions and a touchdown. Well, I guarantee they'll be trying to get the ball to him. From the gun, here's Cutler. And the pocket throws complete. And there is Fred Bennett getting beat by, guess who? Earl Bennett. Boy, that was right on cue. Earl yeah. Bennett just continues to have his career day. That's 11 grabs. Well, uh, Mike, this kid right here is an awful, uh, uh, awfully awesome receiver. <laughs> I couldn't get it out. But uh, he's, he, does, he does a good job of making, uh, making a miss and, and still getting more yards. So. He is only a freshman. Birmingham, Alabama, the hometown. They might have something special with Earl Bennett. Cutler, pretty good time, delivers another strike, complete. And there is Dunning the tight end. This Carolina secondary starting to lead. A little bit. Yeah, starting to show some signs of vulnerability. But then again, you don't have your defensive ends and defensive uh, people that, that's making them rush the throw. So. Earl Bennett, a career day for the freshman out of Birmingham. He is lined up, bottom of your screen. Cutler going to run it himself. He's got the marker, but he wants more. And he's inside the 30. He'll get more to the 26-yard line. What an impressive drive for the Vanderbilt Commodores. It really is, uh, Mike. And Cutler makes it seem like he's really tired and, and, and don't know what he's going to do. But all of a sudden, busts out of the seam. And, and it's hard to bring down. This kid is a, is a real good quarterback. Now this drive started at the Vanderbilt 13. And this will be the seventh play of the drive. Four 
four-wide formation. Cutler, pocket collapses. He's going to throw it away. He had a, Stanley Doty had a hand on his jersey. Cutler knew he was going to go down, made the smart play, and threw it away. Well, the pressure is coming from right up the middle. And uh, Cutler, he's too smart a quarterback. He's not going to just see how he threw it away. He's, he's not going to get sacked. He's gonna, he he, he knows that they need to score on this drive. Second down, 10 yards now. This Carolina defense right now, George, looking a little bit tired. Yeah, they really are. And uh, Cutler is going to make them pay if they don't start stepping up the game right now. Seeing some hands on hips, some puffing and puffing right now. Cutler from the gun. Looks left. Under duress, he'll throw it incomplete. Mike West on a linebacker blitz, providing the pressure there. Well, you got to give our defense a lot of credit. You know, they, they pressured him a little bit, but, but you know, he, he's still getting rid of the football. I like to see him hit him a couple of times and make him get rid of it, not just letting him barely get it off. Third and ten. Will Carolina blitz here? Rushing yards, 125 for the Gamecocks. Vanny, which is 32. Pretty much no mystery. They're going to throw it here. The Commodores, 6 of 14 on third down. Pretty good numbers. Cutler rifles incomplete. Incomplete. Intended for 81, Bryant Anderson. First time we've called his name this afternoon. Uh, Vanderbilt going to go for it. I, I, I don't see how they can because it's a, it's a four minutes left. And they can get three points, but I think, yeah. yeah. You'd have to have a lot of confidence in your defense, and I'm not sure if Bobby Johnson does right now. No doubt. So fourth and ten where the Commodores one out of two on fourth down today. If you're Vanderbilt, this is the play of the game. And now the line judges are coming in and going to blow this one dead. Vanderbilt's going to call timeout, maybe think things over a little bit. Well, Mike, this is what it boils down to. If South Carolina can stop them, uh, at least they can run a little bit more clock out and make it hard on Vanderbilt. But, you know, with, with the Cutler back there, I just, I just don't give up. I just don't give them a chance out. Each team now with one timeout left, and that could be critical depending on what Vanderbilt is uh, able to do. George, you and I have been thoroughly entertained by this one. Uh, no I doubt. To tell you what, uh, we got our got our money's worth, and so did the fans here, as uh, a, a scrappy Vanderbilt squad. Remember, this Vandy team started 4-0. Interesting stat on Vandy. They're the only SEC team now to play eight straight games without a bye, and uh, they will probably look forward to that bye as it's it's coming next week they could probably use some time off after that boy at florida kentucky's the game at home which you would think vandy would be a favorite there and then they'll finish in knoxville where they always seem to play tennessee tight but then lose in the end and they'll try to uh try to change that this year but we we said on the outset look coaches don't want to say it but this is a must win for both of these teams if they want no to go doubt. to a bowl game. No doubt about it. Man. And you can say for Vanderbilt right here, this is the play of the year. They must get a first down mm -hmm. if they're going to have a crack. Yep. Our defense will need to come up with something. I don't know what they need to come up with, but that defensive line, pressure me. And, uh, hey, we need to get something done. Nearly 80,000 fans at williams Bryce Stadium on their feet for the play of the game. Fourth down and 10. It's Cutler. He's got time. He fires. Complete and first down yardage for Earl Bennett, who is putting on an absolute clinic. <laughs> I have to agree with you on that. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy that he beat on this one, George, his namesake, the other Bennett, Fred Bennett. Actually, that's Joseph. Joseph that time. He's, he's pretty much... Uh, He's taken turns. He's he's beaten Bennett. He's beaten Joseph. I mean, he has been too hard to handle. So first and ten from the 15. Cutler looks far side and another reception for the tight end Dustin Dunning. The Vanderbilt Commodores 
not going to say die here. The numbers on Davis, by the way, or Bennett, rather, 12 receptions, 159 yards, and a touchdown. He is at the bottom of your screen. Cutler, he's looking to run. He's looking for a sideline, and a nice job of bumping him out of bounds by Brandon Isaac. I don't know if that was a nice job. I don't know who bumped who out of, out of bounds that time. Cullen took that took that linebacker on, and uh, usually you don't have a quarterback do, that do this, or Mike. I, he rolls out like this right here, and he, he think that he would run it out of bounds, but look at him. He tried to, hey, you want to tackle me, buddy? You better get you some. <laughs> well, you know, we saw just a, a few nights ago Mark Bolger on a, a similar play getting hurt like that. You want to be careful. That's a good way to, to pop a shoulder. You know, Cutler's such a tough guy and he's such a competitor. He's going to, he's not only going to take the hit, he's going to force the contact, but they cannot afford to lose him. Third down and one. Ball spotted at the six. They need the five. They'll line up in the eye. Stephen Bright, the fullback. Jackson Garrison, the tailback. It's Garrison. Garrison upended near the one, and they're going to give him a touchdown. One linesman says touchdown, the other one no signal, but one is enough. And Vanderbilt has a chance to tie this game. Well, Mike, for some reason, I thought it would come down to this because of the fact that he is just a good quarterback. I mean, he's going to call good defense to play. I don't know if he got in, though. That's awfully close. That's just like the one we got in with Savelle, so it yeah. kind of equaled up a little bit. Meanwhile, a very critical extra point is good. Hanfeld is nearly automatic, and he ties this up at 28. Take another look at that final play, and we'll see if we might get a closer angle. Two things to keep an eye on, the knee and where the ball is when the knee touches. Bam, that looks yeah. pretty close. Yeah, it's, it's sort of like the one we got with Savelle. He, he was turning and twisting. and Well, it, it, once again, Mike, we, we turn back and say, hey, look, offense, if you want to win this football game, it's up to you. Yeah. And uh, Blake is, is starting to get his little roll on pretty good. So, hey, go down here and uh, run the clock out, get it all the way down to about three seconds, kick a field goal, game's over, South Carolina wins. How about that? How about that? You know, Blake Mitchell hasn't been in a game like this since the Georgia game no in doubt. Athens. Uh, that didn't exactly end the way Carolina had hoped, but a similar situation. And again, if you joined us late, Savelle Newton is in the locker room. He uh, appears to have an ankle injury. In all likelihood, we will not see him again. So the Gamecocks are going to have to do it with guys like Mitchell, Rice, maybe Noah Whiteside now plays a bigger role, but they will not have the help of one Savelle Newton. Yeah, the three-headed the three heavy, three -headed dragon is gone. That man, Steve Spurrier, has never lost to the Commodores, 12-0. Those 12 meetings, of course, coming when he was the head coach at Florida. And he's trying to make it 13-0. It has not been as easy as some people might have expected. But I tell you what, you talk to the folks, from the Vanderbilt side, had a long talk with Vanderbilt play-by-play -play man Joe Fisher. They really thought that this game could come down to the wire. They liked the way they match up with the Gamecocks. And so far, uh, truer words have not been spoken. This baby is coming down to the wire, and the guys that had the ball last might wind up winning this one. I agree with you on that, uh, Mike. And one thing about it, when we was up two touchdowns, South Carolina didn't score any more points after that, and so they, they remained let uh, Brandon Bill stay in the football game. So if you're going to do that, then why not make it real tight on Carlos Thomas and Noah Whiteside back deep for the kickoff from Vandy. And you see the uh, time left, 3.55. There's plenty of time, each team with one timeout available. Kickoff going to be fielded at the goal line by Whiteside. The 15, the 20, and down at the 23. Again, you only need a field goal in this situation if you're thinking about career long for Josh Brown. 45 yards, he did it in the last game against Kentucky. Scoring drive for the Commodores, very impressive. 13 plays, 
87 yards. Three minutes and 16 off the clock. And while they threw their way down the field, they ran the ball in for the touchdown by Garrison. No matter what this turnout, Bobby Johnson came in here with a good game plan. It certainly has. He's done a, a wonderful job so far this season, really, as a whole. Mitchell looking our way. Ball is batted down. That's the second time this quarter that a Vanderbilt lineman has got a big paw up there. This time it's Herdley Harrison, number four. Well, you know I sound like a, 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 a beaten drum. It, it, would ten, it would seem to me that Blake is being as tall as he is, wouldn't get these many passes uh, batted back at him, but he's, he's, he's got them the last couple of times out. Clock stops, 343, second down and 10. Terman and Davis in the backfield. Mitchell, play action. Mitchell looking over the middle. He's got his man, Chris Clark. Clark out to the 45-yard line of Vandy. A first down for Carolina. You know, the, the thing I like about this kid right here is the last couple of weeks, he's been really missing. Uh, I, I was wondering, you know, because he, he makes good blocks. Not only do he catches the football real well, he makes good blocks on the football field, too. So uh, Steve Spurrier loved this kid right here, too. So like I said, when, when Tavell Newton went down, they, they got other receivers that can step up. That is a 32-yard reception, the longest of the year for Chris Clark. First down and 10 from the 45. Mitchell. Again, play action. Steps up in the pocket, delivers a strike. It's Clark. He is wide open on the near sideline and knocked out of bounds at the 31. Somebody didn't get the memo that Chris Clark was running a route on that one. I guarantee you that, Mike. And what makes it so bad is that we come up with something different every time. And the, the thing that surprised me is that why is he so wide open? <laughs> I, guess, I bet you that Bobby would know the next time. So the Gamecocks inching toward field goal range, and that man right there could be the hero of this game. Four of four on the year, and again, that long of 45 yards. Mitchell, a little draw play up the middle. Big hole for Mike Davis out to the 23. Gain of about nine yards. That's the advantage that you get, Mike, when uh, when you when you start to play that play action pass, you can come back with that draw, and those guys, you catch those guys going down, coming down field at you, and Mike can bust it right up the middle like he did. Takes a lot of confidence in that freshman tailback, Davis, for Spurrier to give him the ball in this situation. The last thing you want here is a turnover. No doubt. Second down, call it a short two. And again, the Gamecocks go with the eye. It's going to be a pass out in the flat. It's Rice. Rice breaks a tackle at the 10 and knocked out of bounds inside the five. Sidney Rice putting on his own clinic. He and Earl Bennett tick for tack here so far today. No doubt about it. Hey, they ran this play a few times. This guy's got more moves than Randy Moss. I can't get it. Hey. And you know what? He's enthusiastic. He's enthusiastic about it. That's what makes me like him so much. Is that he he wants to play wide receiver and make plays. New career high for Rice now: 129 yards receiving on seven grabs. The redshirt freshman out of Gaffney, South Carolina. First and goal from the five, from the eye. Mitchell gives off to Davis. Davis is stuffed and devoured by that Vandy defensive line at about the three. Clock continues to wind down. One thing they don't want to do here, George, is, is leave Vanderbilt with too much time. I, I agree with that. And hopefully, uh, when our guys are down, but hopefully uh, we're going to be able to, to uh, settle down here in a minute. I'm, I'm hoping it's Coach Spurrier to do. And, uh, of course, we got a player down right now, but we don't need any line problems. That's for, that's for sure. We've had those guys switching around the whole year. But uh, I think this just got ran in the back of and, Somebody, you know, ooh, he was down on the ground, too. Yeah, it's but. Freddie St. Pro, the senior left guard. And big old Freddie St. Pro, 6'5", 314 pounds. Oh, yeah. He's, He's going to walk off on yeah. his own power. Love to see that. Love to see that big guy. Meanwhile, it is second and goal from the three. Two minutes, seven seconds remaining. Each team with one timeout. And 
the Gamecocks will try to punch it in here. You don't want to go for a field goal if you don't have to. No doubt. <laughs> no doubt. I mean, you got to give South Carolina Steve Spurrier a lot of credit. He got the ball moving on, that, on, on this drive right here. Game clock. Play clock, rather, down to five. Mitchell burning every second he can, looking in the end zone, and it's a touchdown for Sidney Rice on the quick slam. And the Gamecocks recapture the lead. Sidney Rice, his third touchdown on the day. You know what, this receiver right here is looking real good, Mike. Hey, I was just kidding about Sterling Sharp, but hey, <laughs> this kid is starting to make his own move. Five touchdowns in the last two games for Sidney Rice. Wow, the extra point by Brown is true, and it is a seven-point lead, 35-28, as Steve Spurrier has fallen in love with his freshman receiver, 6'4", Sidney Rice. But here's the other side to the story. A lot of time on that clock, a minute 41 as we take another look. Well, guy just beat him inside, you know, made a good slant move inside. <laughs> hey, what can you say? And, and then Blake. Blake made a great pass. I mean, this is something that he needs to do and keep doing throughout the rest of the year. That last drive, seven plays, 77 yards in just two minutes and 14 seconds. Now, that's a Steve Spurrier drive. <laughs> well, you think Sidney Rice was happy to get the phone call one morning that his new head football coach would be <laughs> Steve Spurrier? I, I mean, bet he was. <laughs> this, is, this is a guy that's going to excel in this system. Here's a... Here's a close look. This is what Blake Mitchell's looking at. Bam. Pretty hard to defend that, George. No, no doubt about it. And those guys know that they probably going to get the ball thrown to him. But with a release like, like Blade had, how's he going to miss it? Look at that. That's, that's impressive. Yeah, those are career numbers right there. Eight grabs, 131 yards, three touchdowns. The last two games, he's caught 16 for 256 and five touchdowns. So keep in mind, this guy missed the first game of the year. Ever since then, he has uh, <laughs> stepped up. And when it's all said and done, this guy, I'm telling you what, he could be an all-SEC receiver. Uh, uh, and probably an all-American, too. Vanderbilt, a minute 41 and a timeout. That's what they'll have to work with. And the return will start from the 7. It's Jackson Garrison. He's past the 20 and down near the 25. But what do you do here? If you blitz, you want to get pressure on Cutler, but if you blitz and you miss, man, you're taking an awfully big chance because they have found no answer for Earl Bennett. And Earl Bennett, number 10, will keep an eye on him on this drive. Well, you, well, you better keep your eyes on Cutler. He'll do a little throwing. He'll do a little running. He'll do anything he can to get that ball downfield and get them some points. Three wide formation for Vandy. Cutler to his left. Cutler got a throw incomplete. Intended for Eric Davis, the senior out of Nashville. Very difficult uh, way to throw the football. He threw it across his body. And he's kind of, you know, if you don't step back and plant that feet, it's kind of hard to throw the ball like that. But if anybody can do it, Cutler certainly can be the one to do it. But, uh, and particularly, the, you know, he, he knew that the defensive, the defensive player wasn't going to get it, so he, he threw it on out there anyway. Four down territory, obviously, the rest of the way for Vandy. This is second down and ten. And again, a lot of time on that clock. Minute 29. It'll stop every time Vandy gets a first down. Cutler throws complete to Bennett. Who else? Yeah. <laughs> Once again, he goes out there and makes a curl. Only thing about it was he's on his knees, so the ball's automatic down, but there we go. Third down again. Well, he'll go to the replay. I, I like Cutler. I really do. Well, he has really come alive here in the second half. So, too, is Vanderbilt. Third and five. Cutler to the sideline and knocked away. Knocked away by 36, Stoney Woodson, a redshirt freshman. 
And a nice play there. Otherwise, that would have been another reception for Ben. Yes, it would have been. And, and you got to give Cutler a lot of credit. He stands in there and he throws the ball, but the, receipt, the, the defensive back broke on the football and, and got a hand on it. So we better, we better count our uh, blessings on that one. Well, it comes down to this now. Fourth down and five. Vanderbilt two out of three on fourth. And Carolina stops him here. The game's over. Fans on their feet. From the gun, it's Cutler. Carolina showing blitz. Here comes the pressure. Pass is caught. Complete first down, and it is Earl Bennett again. Mm. They live by that pass to him all day long, all day long. We are talking about two freshman receivers today lighting it up, Sidney Rice and this man, Earl Bennett. All day long. Earl Bennett, I know he's tired of getting hit. <laughs> Carolina, every time I turn around, Carolina put his guy's hands on him. 14 catches for Bennett. First and 10, Cutler operating from the gun. Has all kinds of time, surveys, fires, and completes it to Earl Bennett. Right on the sideline. Another first down for Vandy. Had to do a little tight wire job right here. Yep, that's a catch. Yeah. Two feet in. Barely in. <laughs> Score to pass along to you. Bama now leads Tennessee 6-3. A field goal battle there in Tuscaloosa. Jake Cutler now has passed his career high. 319 passing yards. Cutler caught again by, by Bennett. No doubt. Same guy. It's incredible. He, he's watching him. Every, <laughs> it seems like he's just dropping back. I'm going to wait till you make your break, and then I'm going to throw you the football right here. Make your break. There he is. And did you see Cutler's eyes? I mean, he looked at him the whole way. They're, they're, they're not doing anything surprising here. 16 catches, 204 yards for Bennett. Cutler, all kinds of time. Throws it over the middle. In coverage, and almost intercepted. Boy, that was a dangerous throw. Intended for Eric Davis. Isaac Isaac could have made could have made a game-winning um, interception had he did that had he caught that ball and then, and the, and the receiver made a good play down there by 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 turning himself into a defensive back and look at that he made a good play you got to give him credit too. Second down and ten. The clock again. That right now could be the Gamecocks' ally. Just 20 seconds remaining. Vanderbilt does have a timeout. Again from the gun, four wide formation. It's Cutler. Stepping up in the pocket, delivering a strike toward the corner and incomplete for Davis. You know, when you're trying to run a corner route like that, it's kind of hard to get there, especially when you're, when you're throwing in the double coverage. Uh, but he made sure that couldn't nobody else catch the football. I mean, when you watch Cutler right here, He's, he's throwing a little corner route right here, but can't nobody else get to it, though. Nobody else. It's the linebacker, Mike West, in coverage. Mike West, one of the fastest players on the field for Carolina. 14 seconds left. Third down and 10. Williams Price, about as loud as it's been all year. Cutler gets it, fakes the handoff, throws over the middle, incomplete. That's Lance Laurie in on coverage. Linebackers dropping back. It's been a good day for Lance Laurie. No doubt about it. He's been playing really inspired by, by some of the things he's been doing on the football field. He's, he made a lot of tackles, breaking up the pass. If he had a little bit more hands, he probably would intercept that one, but he's done a good job today. So a pair of Carolina linebackers deflecting passes away. And now it's fourth and ten again. Vanderbilt. It seems like they're at their best when it's a do or die situation. They're three out of four on fourth down. And they will burn their final timeout. Ooh, nine seconds. Ooh. Well, a fantastic crowd here today. And nobody leaving early for this one. No doubt. <laughs> 
No need to worry about traffic right now. You got to stay around for this ball game as the Gamecocks will try to hold on to a victory here. Then it's to the road to Knoxville, Tennessee, to take on the Volunteers, who, by the way, have just lost to the Crimson Tide. Final score, 6-3. to three. How about that for a, uh, a final? Then at Arkansas, Florida at home, and Clemson at home on November the 19th. And the Gamecocks are hoping that that Clemson game will have a possible bowl berth on the line. But first things first, they got to win this one. Vanderbilt. <laughs> and, and Vanderbilt, you know, they're not out of the bowl hunt. No, no doubt about but it. But they have to win here. So this is their season. A fourth and ten, nine seconds. If you get a first down here, the no clock will stop momentarily, but you've yeah. got to hurry to that line of scrimmage. So I wonder if they might just go to the end zone. We shall see. We shall. Cutler. Yes, they on Bennett. From the gun, the Gamecocks only rushing three. Cutler steps up, surveys, fires, tipped and incomplete, and that's your ball game. Coe Simpson in on the deflection, and the Gamecocks will take a deep breath and will improve on the season to four and three as Vanderbilt falls just short of putting this game into overtime. Uh, I tell you what, Steve Coach is over there. Got a good uh, fresh breath, breath of relief that uh, that pass was incomplete. You got to give you got to give Bobby Johnson a lot of credit because when they came down here, I thought South Carolina would win, but I didn't know this game would be this close. And Bobby Johnson once again has nothing to hold his head down about. Carolina will undoubtedly take a knee here as Blake Mitchell. Touches the grass, the clock goes to zero, and the Gamecocks hold on. Spurrier improves to 13-0 against Vanderbilt. The Gamecocks win their sixth consecutive game against the Commodores. Carolina now 4-3 overall, 2-3 in the Southeastern Conference. George, this one was fun. This one was a lot of fun, especially because the South Carolina Gamecocks won a football game, and defense came out and played a little bit hard. So many uh, great individual performances. Let's not forget about Savelle Newton before the injury. He ran for 80 yards. Sidney Rice caught eight passes for 132, and we'll go over some of those other totals when we return. We'll take one final timeout, and we'll be back from williams Bryce Stadium in just a moment. Uh,